This program was recorded on Monday, May the 15th, in the year of our Lord, 2017. The opinions expressed by the participants in the following program do not necessarily represent that of this station or its management. Or anybody else. <laughs> From the John DeVitter Recording Studio, located in an undisclosed and clandestine location on the great northwest side of our fair city of Chicago, we once again are pleased to be presenting yet another edition of our monthly roundtable panel discussion show, Meet the Chicago Historians. Now here's the guy who started it all, John DeVitta. Well, thank you very much, Rich. From the John DeVitta Broadcast Center, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Meet the Chicago Historians on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, May the 15th, the year of our Lord, 2017. Today, the panel will be talking about May is the National Police Memorial Month. The police and mist legend and Hollywood comparing those images with reality. And now, here is our announcer for today's broadcast, Mr. Richard Lang. Now here's our panel moderator, Jack Red Ryan. Jack? I got nobody to throw it to. <laughs> well, hello everybody. What a beautiful day it is. After we've been in London town for how many weeks now? It was like this summer in 1969 in May. It was rainy, foggy, chilly. It was the first time I went from being in a car to being on foot downtown, hmm. and it was May. It was supposed to be nicer, but it turned out okay. <laughs> Tell them why, uh, w what you were doing in that, Jack. Uh, I was looking for a bride. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I was actually uh, assigned a foot. In a were you uh, Were you a taxi driver, or Uber? <laughs> no, I, was, I was the police. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I was a, a real okay. flat foot. So oh, flew, okay. Where the old one comes from. But, uh, <laughs> flat foot floozy. John Law. Well, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, and it's beautiful today, and let's hope and pray it stays this way. That's not even supposed to rhyme, but it does. Okay, let's introduce our regular panelists, and we have some guests in the studio today. So starting here, Mr. Sir? Bill Kugelman. And I spent uh, 46 years in the Chicago Fire Department and was the deputy director of the Illinois Bureau of Racetrack Police. Uh, which uh, I have a little, you know, a little problem with uh, the guy sitting to my right here, because uh, uh, we were the real police out there. We weren't flat feet. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I uh, also was the president of uh, the Firefighters Union, Local 2, and uh, now represent the Fire Museum of Greater Chicago, of which we will have an open house uh, coming up this following Saturday, the 20th of May, 5218 Southwestern, and we are open from 10 until 2. Please bring a camera. Come on out and see us. Admission is free. Admission is free, although we have a little bucket. You will accept any donations. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll tell you what, it's beautiful. Anybody who hasn't seen it, is, uh, they're missing out. It's right there. <coughs> well, it's easy for me, 10 minutes from the house. Yeah, 5218 South on Western yeah. Avenue, in an old firehouse that uh, uh, bless uh, Alderman Ed Burke uh, gave to us. He didn't give it to us, but we rent it from the city. And uh, on this last Saturday, we dedicated the second floor as the Ken Little, who used to be on our panel, still is, but uh, is uh, a little under the weather. But uh, we dedicated that as the Ken Little Library. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look up anything you want up there. So please, come on out and visit us. Now you, uh, you stay the Illinois Racetrack. <coughs> Racetrack police. Yes. You with the horses? Yes. So you were the mounted police? No. <laughs> no. Ha ha. No. Ha ha ha. With the federale side. Uh, we, uh, we, we would, uh, uh, well, if you knew what I know about racing, uh, I don't bet. Yeah. Now, to my left. Yes. I am not to the left of anyone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, hasten, I hasten to correct anyone that, that would, would, would say that, but maybe geographically speaking. My name is John S. Kacholko. I'm 
a former member of the Illinois General Assembly, served in town government in Cicero, do public speaking, and am an alumnus of WJJG. Which was the old Joe Gentile station. That's right, that's right. What was its... Of, for, um, of happy memory. What was its... Uh, what number was it on the dial? 1530? 1530. Yeah, AM 1530. Yeah. yeah. It's been gone now for how long, John? Four years, five years? Yeah, about five years. Yeah. yeah. Never see its likes again. Mm -hmm. Great Next station. Up? was good to work with. Good people to work with. And uh, You did a morning show? Or? Did a morning show there. Did a, I, I, I co-hosted with Judy Bartzapinka. She had a, an afternoon program once a week, and she brought me on as an alternating host. And then when, uh, when she was unable to, uh, to make the uh, requirements, uh, she turned the show over to me. So I was doing a morning program and the afternoon show. And enjoyed it very much. You got a double bubble. Yes, double dipper, <laughs> yeah. Got to meet John DeVita and, uh, and Joe Gentile. was an interesting fellow, World War II veteran. Sure was, yeah. yeah. Great guy. And I'm your announcer, Richard Lang. I've done some teaching at the college level in modern European and American history. I've been a longtime student of our deeply missed panel member, Ken Little who really got me into the uh, local Chicago history aspects of American and my previous specialty of European history. I'm also involved in a group that recreates old-time radio shows. I've got the perfect face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what uh, is this, uh, um, how often do you do that? Is it that depends on how many gigs we get, usually about uh, once a month. You got one coming up soon? Or? Uh, not until August. In August. We'll be what are you be doing? Not quite sure yet. We haven't organized, but you know, we usually do more comedy. Right. The yeah. Bickersons, mm -hmm. Abbott and Costello. That's what most of the audience seems to want. You pays to be ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> or that show. That's my lifelong motto. Right? <laughs> <laughs> haven't done that yet. No. No. Then I remember seeing a list one time. Uh, I might have been in that Nostalgia Digest. Year by year, the most popular mm -hmm. shows, always the top five or six, were always comedy. Yeah. On the radio, so. We've tried a few mysteries and dramas, yeah. but they just don't seem to go over. I think our somewhat older audience doesn't have the attention span. Well, well, last weekend on the the, uh, the old, what used to be Chuck Shaden's show, it's now, uh, I can't think of his name. Steve Darnall. Darn thank you. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. They had the original, the first Whistler show. I only caught the tail end of that. And yeah. Guess, guess yeah. who was Whistler? Gail Gordon. Huh. Is that right? Yeah. This is uh. Ricardo. Sit <laughs> down. Yeah. <laughs> Osgood yeah. Conklin. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> I always think of a principal. I think of him, though. Yeah, so. yeah, Armis Brooks. So. Right. Yes, sir. You're next. My name is Don Peter. I'm a member of the Fire Museum of Greater Chicago. I worked for the Village of Oak Park for 20 years. Almost sometimes I even did something. And uh, that's about it. So, Village of Oak Park. Right. Land of Ernest Hemingway, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Who else? Frank uh, Wright. Betty White. Betty White, too? Betty White. Yeah. Was she yeah. from there? Yeah, she well, was yeah. born there. Yeah. In, That's uh, Bob Newhart. Bob Newhart. That's right. Bob Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah. Well, was he? Well, yeah, okay. And a couple of Come on, guys. let's hear some more. Come on. <laughs> I uh, had what's a, his name? I had a place well, up Hemingway, in Wisconsin course, yeah. right next yeah. to Talizen. Oh, yeah? Right next to, right, oh, boy, what a, what a place. Um, what, a, what a place that was. What's his name, John, uh, from uh, Ooh. from uh, Frazier, the father in there? Oh. John Mahoney? John, John Mahoney, Mahoney. Yes, he's, he's, he's born there. But he no. wasn't born there, but he's he still is in Old Merry Old England. Right. Yeah. That's right. English. Were you born here? I was born in Arkansas. Oh, I was going to say right oh. in, this, in this building? <laughs> Not yeah. no, no, on the we, south side. We've south been through this before, the Arkansas business. <laughs> right. Hmm. Arkansas traveler. Arkansas okay, we have two back. guests today sitting in the panel, and it looks to be a very lively discussion, as I can see from the warm-up so far. And you, sir, are? I'm Sal Amati. I'm a retired firefighter for 35 years, and I've been off 30 years. Hmm. And I'm sort of like a uninvited guest. I have no speech. Thank you. You don't need one. <laughs> See everybody with all their written notes and all their written material here? <laughs> and we're pleased to have you. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Denny Farrell, and what can I say? Uh, I'm a Chicago broadcaster. Mm -hmm. We have a pro. We have a pro here. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, one of three announcers inducted into the Big Band Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. The rest are people like Benny Goodman, Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm a friend of Sal's, and Sal said, hey, yeah. want to go over there? Do you want to give me a ride? So I'm the cab driver uh, <laughs> today. Yeah. Will AFTRA allow you to do this? Or? Pardon me? AFTRA, what are they? AFTRA. What's the AFTRA? The, uh, oh, AFTRA, the union? Yeah. Oh, don't tell them. Shh. <laughs> Shh. It's a secret. It's okay, nobody listens anyway. <laughs> Good to have you. Thank yeah. you. It's nice and to you be can, here. You can tell just by talking to you, you, you are in, in the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't get away with obscene phone calls. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's a little humor in our business for those of you tuned in. I'm sorry, that's humor. <laughs> yeah, right. Just a little humor. They, they know we, 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 we're a bunch of funny people here. Right? No, not funny, but you know, <laughs> funny. But well, I don't know. <laughs> okay, gang. It's up to okay, gang. What are we going to talk about first? FBI? Hmm. What does FBI stand for? For being ignorant? For inventing idiots. Fidelity, oh, bravery, and Fort integrity. Sal says foreign-born foreign -born Italian. Full-blooded. Full, full -blooded. Full -bl oh, full-blooded Italian. Okay. For being ignorant. Federal Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> Remember John Kennedy, uh, after they, he were elected, they, were, uh, they won the election in 1960. He was invited out to Johnson's LBJ Ranch. Not bad for a former high school uh, teacher there, wasn't he? And and uh, they did some, that, and the report, news reports said they did some hunting. And you picture people hunting, they're in the nice warm garb, tramping through the woods. No, LBJ had like a pl platform set up uh, where they had their, their, their bar was right in there. And they would put grain on the <laughs> ground out in front, and the deer would walk up and then shoot them. Oh, oh real sports, real real sports. Yeah. Anyway, what, he was what's sent. wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, the deer. Anyway, uh, think about Bambi now. Come on, uh, and then uh, I understand that he took the one to the taxidermist, and they sent it to Kennedy, and Kennedy had it put away or hidden or something. And he had he had a famous quote beforehand. He said the three most overrated things in the world were hunting, the state of Texas, and the FBI. So there were two out of three. <laughs> <laughs> right in Johnson's face there. But anyway, we, uh, it seems like the newsboys are making a big deal out of uh, this missile of this guy, uh, the director Comey now, who I thought you kicked out a long time ago myself where he was behaving in public. Anybody got any comments on that? Or? Well, it's funny that some of the people who were demanding that he be removed just a few yeah. weeks ago yeah. are now outraged that yeah. he has been removed. It's an yeah, right. <laughs> interesting, well, interesting shift. Day makes, though. Yeah. yeah. Isn't yeah. that typical politics, oh, though, course, John? Yeah. yeah but but you know, if 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 Hillary Clinton had been elected, she prob her first official act probably would have been to fire Jim Comey. She might have stepped away after taking the oath and done it before she delivered her <laughs> inaugural address. Yeah. Excuse me, folks, I have an order here to issue. Yeah. And and I think the media would have cheered. They would have they would have said, "Boy, what a strong leader she right. is! She's demonstrating what a commander in chief she's going to be. The world is going to take note." It's just amazing how different it is when someone else takes the action. I well, saw the uh, uh, interview. I forget who it was that was interviewing him. Was it on uh, Sunday's uh, program at 6 o'clock? I don't remember who it was, but, but it, it was the first interview with him uh, before all this thing started, and be, you know, when he was appointed. And uh, it sure... It sure influenced me. Yeah. Uh, he said all the right things and, you know, what he was going to do, and it sounded like he did it. You mean the president? Don't want the president. No, Comey. Oh, Comey. Comey. I thought you meant the president. But anyway, uh, I you know I said... done well like within the bureau. That's one point you can say. Well, I, I don't know. Well, he's a boss. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, you're not. Right. I was the boss. Gonna, I wasn't right, well-liked right, right, by anybody yeah. either. An you know, old saying on the job was, he may be wrong, but he's still the boss. Yeah. Or vice yeah, versa. Yeah, yeah. But I remember the, the, the best split personality type interview I just saw recently. Someone was interviewing California Congresswoman Maxine Waters, mm -hmm. and they said, do you approve of President Trump firing? No. And then within, I swear, within one or two breaths later, it was, what would the... Uh, Hillary Clinton had done if she was president. Well, she would have fired him right away. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. You know. I guess it's yeah. a lot depends. Anybody else? Come on. Something. I, I was listening to a bunch of news clips from yeah. Democrats, and there was about 10 of them, and they all wanted to get to the bottom of this. They must have all got yeah. the same uh, hmm. email. Yeah. The same notes. Right. Yeah. 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 Or scripts. Calling for a special prosecutor, no doubt. You know. Right. Okay. Well, it's not going to change the prosecution. Uh, 
having a different FBI director is like, he's so far removed from everything anyway, as it is. He, he's the guy that's on top, more or less the, the, the face of the uh, organization. He, I don't even know if he knows how to do an investigation personally. I don't know what his background is. So identified with J. Edgar Hoover for so many years, it's hard yeah. to get over that hurdle. Yeah. yeah. Mm. They were all afraid of him. <laughs> uh, everybody yeah. was afraid. President, sure. He had a skeleton in everybody, didn't he? He was oh, the yeah. one who gave it the name Federal Bureau of Investigation. Before Hoover, it was just the Bureau of Investigation within yeah, the right, Justice right. Department. And he gave it the, the FBI yeah. in, indicator. And uh, I mean, he was Mr. Law Enforcement. When yeah. I was oh, a yeah. kid, and for yeah. generations, he was, he was Mr. FBI. Sure, right. Yeah, he was. And he, he, had no, he had no background in, in law enforcement himself. He was a bureaucrat. And he, of course, that's what you took, someone to run an organization is what it was. Whether or not he ever made a pinch or not in his life. Mm. Well, he arrested Alvin Karpus. He did? Well, that's the, the story is that, you know, Karpus <laughs> yeah. had said that he would, he would kill J. Edgar Hoover if Hoover dared show his face yeah. anywhere near him. This was in the newspapers. Yeah. So who, when they finally located Karpus, the FBI surrounded the building, and Hoover flew in from Washington. And oh, when yeah. Karpus came out the door to get into his car to take his girlfriend to dinner or something, he hears, Karpus, I'm J. Edgar Hoover. You're under arrest. <laughs> so he and and uh, he did he did officially was the arresting officer of Alvin Karpus. Now who was the guy uh, the, the FBI agent who uh, I guess he was credited for getting uh, um, Dillinger here. I can't think of his name now offhand. Mm. Is that Melvin Purvis? Yeah, that's who it was. Yeah, Melvin mm -hmm. Purvis. In the movie, it was, uh, <laughs> it was Ben Johnson Man, in the movie. Yeah. Was yeah. But anyway, supposedly there was a big. Uh, the story goes that it was a big deal that he was getting more publicity than J. Edgar was. John Edgar Hoover, J. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, this guy left and he either started some other organization, club of his own for kids. He wound up a suicide or something like that. Well, J. Edgar probably, you know, didn't change his dress every day. Yeah. And, uh, you know. well, I, came, too. I came across a, uh, one of the original comic book of Captain America from World War II. Yeah. When Captain America was introduced as a, it was an American hero who was going to fight the Nazis and the Japanese. And in the very first comic book, J. Edgar Hoover mm -hmm. informs FDR that we have this new secret weapon. We have this man with these incredible powers. They identified the president as FDR, but for some reason they called Hoover J. Edgar Harper, I think. For some, <laughs> they, they, did, they, they changed his name slightly. I didn't understand that. Why you could, you could, you, it was okay to use the President of the United States, but they had to use a pseudonym for J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> he, would, he wouldn't have liked that in person. I don't, I don't but that was, uh, that was how, how uh, Captain America was introduced yeah. by, by J. Edgar Hoover to in the, in the Oval Office. Office. And for a long time you had a major radio program called This Is Your FBI, and Hoover took this. a direct control right. of the scripts and such of that show. They had yeah. a TV a program show. on uh, Sunday night. Ephraim right. Zimbalis Jr. Right, the FBI. Yeah. Lewis Erskine. Yeah, Inspector Lewis. Erskine. Uh -huh. The inspector, as an agent, does the work on the FBI. The inspector does what an inspector does. They go around and check up on people. Yeah. So that was the inspector. Any, like anybody that's been in law enforcement uh, for a while, Jack, yeah. myself, uh, anybody that has anything to do with the FBI... Uh, you don't want to have anything to do with them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. they just they just don't. They uh, a lot of them are just college kids. Mm. Uh, you know, got a law degree and and or an accounting degree, and and uh, they sure know how to screw things up <laughs> at at a local level. And one thing they have is deep we pockets. Were. Those feds. <laughs> oh, absolutely. The deepest. Yeah. You're gonna take the long way home tonight. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> uh, no. It's true. Anybody that's uh, that's in law enforcement, other than the feds, uh, you know. And with their dress code, you could spot an FBI uh, agent a mile away. Used to be able, anyway. Yeah, yeah. maybe it's, that might. Maybe be more so, you know. Yeah. Look yeah, like uh, uh, there's sure. somewhere from Central Casting or <laughs> something like that. You know, with a perfect haircut and the uh, sunglasses, Ivy League yeah. suits, or. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hoover did that because the the old Bureau of Investigation didn't have much respect <coughs> before he took over. It was it was kind of a political patronage operation. There, yeah. it didn't have a great deal of professionalism. They didn't present, and he wanted them to be, you know, the absolute 
tops in terms of law enforcement mm -hmm. and to have that image. He wanted them to be a feared and respected. So that's why the dress code, yeah. the coat and tie and everything came in. I'm we, sure they had clothing allowance or something. Though. Right. Mm -hmm. Was Elliot Ness an FBI agent? No, he was a treasury, treasury agent. Treasury agent. Okay. He, was, he was a T-man, not a G-man. No, he man. was what uh, Snuffy Smith calls a revenue. Revenue, yeah. That's what he was, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he, never, he never met Capone, by the way, in real life. Right. right. But that's now what, ATF, right? Mm. The Treasury Department? No, that's the Secret Service now. No, ATF is, is tre that's Treasury. Alcohol. That's that's a part of the Treasury Department. Right. Alcohol, tobacco, fire. I think right. they call ATFE, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives, I think. now. Mm. Bureau yeah. of yeah. Alcohol, tobacco, yeah. B-A-T-F-E. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a, well, that's another story altogether. We can do a whole show on that. But uh, anyway, uh, going back, this business about what Bill alluded to before in his dress, that seemed like they, they put that on him as though they're not even sure that he was playing for the other team. But he was, uh, they, 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 someone put it on him when it was still a disgrace to be so. Not and a way of discrediting him. People, yeah. people who didn't like Hoover yeah. wanted to discredit yeah. him. Yeah. But I mean, now like, it's not only acceptable, it's probably preferable in the, according to the, <laughs> the eyes of the, uh, <laughs> the uh, politically correct. Well, you were talking about, about John Kennedy. There was, there was a, I remember this joke, I remember hearing this at the time, they said, uh, President Johnson, upon taking office, has indicated that he will retain J. Edgar Hoover in office. We oh. have not yet heard from J. Edgar Hoover whether he intends to retain <laughs> President Johnson yeah. in <laughs> office. <laughs> How many years was he there? Forty some? Or? Oh, oh, he boy, took over yeah. in the twenties, and he died, I think, in seventy two, seventy three. Right. Yeah. yeah, close to forty years. Yeah. yeah, there was a program on. Well, I guess it's the hundredth birthday of Kennedy. Yeah, and uh, right. his grandson was talking about him, and he said when we went to some place, and, and Kennedy was driving the golf course. He hated to drive in there, get with him. He says, "Why?" He says, "This guy couldn't drive a PT boat, but you let them <laughs> drive in a golf course." <laughs> he asked Kennedy once, "How did you become a war a child?" A child says, "Mr. President, how did you become a war hero?" He said, it was very involuntary. They sank my boat. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why uh, I've heard it said, like, you know, they made the big uh, story of the PPT-109. And, right. he, you know, he saved, he saved people yeah. swimming. I know that. But how did he manage to get this fast-moving boat in front of that destroyer like that? So, yeah. No? It took, right. took credit to do it. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not I'm, by the way, I'm not, uh, I'm not belittling anybody's war, war service. No. They were there. I wasn't. <laughs> it, was be, it was because of that that his brother volunteered for that. What proved to be a suicide mission because he, he was his his older brother Joe was mm -hmm. somewhat envious of the fact that his younger brother Jack had gotten all this notoriety, had been decorated, was in the newspaper, and he's a bona fide war hero. And so Joe wanted before the war ended, he wanted to do something equally heroic, and that's mm -hmm. why he volunteered for that mission, which ultimately mm -hmm. cost it his was, life. It was in the, uh, uh, Flyer, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. But Army Air Force. He had a fly B seventeen loaded with whatever. loaded with explosives. And just before he got there, he had a bailout. Yeah. And for some reason, he didn't bail out yeah. or got killed bailing out. I do know. I remember seeing uh, more recently in one of the as a historical uh, footnote that it was about the nineteen sixty campaign and how the Catholicism was working against him in some eyes, and uh, he went down to it was like this. Southern Baptist Convention, I yeah, think it was. Yeah, I think it was in Texas. And he, uh, he went to speak before them. You know, he's, he's, and he, uh, he made the point. He said, uh, he talked about loyalty. My brother my brother was as loyal as any American and gave his life, and I was wounded and all that. And at the end, he also said, thanks for having me. I trust I didn't make any converts for my church, you know, <laughs> no. which is a good way to end yeah. any kind of a yeah. 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 And yeah. then I think the commentator said the, the, the South never voted Democratic after that. <laughs> <laughs> the um, but he well, carried Texas. He can, they, they carry. They carried a number of southern states in mm -hmm. spite of the, in spite of the religious issue. Nixon made inroads in '60, but they did carry a number of southern states. The uh, he wasn't the first Catholic to run, of course. Alfred E. Smith ran right. in 1928, mm -hmm. and when he lost, he sent a one-word telegram to the Pope: "Unpack." Unpack. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway. How do we get on that subject, folks? I don't know. I don't know. From the, FB, the, uh, from the FBI. The FBI, yes, yes. <laughs>
Yes, for being ignorant, full-blooded Italian. What else were we? <laughs> what else? Fidelity, bravery, and integrity. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. That's that's the slogan of the FBI. Is it really? Yeah, yeah that's that's inscribed yeah. on their on their shield, and and then that was also something that Hoover instituted. He wanted the the, the initials to stand for something. So fidelity, bravery, and integrity. Well, I would say he succeeded in what he was trying to do. Yeah. I'm you her FBI, a federal man, and did you ever see the movie with James Stewart? FBI oh, sure. That's so. a great picture yeah. too, and it yeah. talks about the origins of the FBI. Tom McKenna and Dennis McKenna both worked for the FBI one time as clerks. Oh, you know. did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> they were saying they always get a kick out of the scene where who was it, Babyface Nelson, and someone says, "Don't shoot G men." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they always get a, guys there always get a kick out of that scene. Yeah. Don't, mm. shoot, don't shoot G men. Anyway, let's go, gang. Come on. What have we got now? Oh, we're talking about Comey, right? Comey and his <laughs> dismissal. So, who can you think of? Someone should fill the spot no. out there. Uh, who did Obama nominate for the Supreme Court? Merrick, Merrick, Merrick Garland. Merrick Garland. Yeah, he's, Garland. His name has been. The yeah, there are Republicans that are floating Garland's sure. name. Yeah, yeah. But I. There's, there's a lot of them now. There are eight people that have been interviewed. Yeah. Two women, I think, and and uh, a former congressman, Senator Cornyn from Texas, who's uh, apparently has a law enforcement background, prosecutor, I believe. They former congressman who was an FBI agent. Uh, they had the interview. Then they have the talent contest, and there's the bathing suit contest, and too, the, isn't the it? Congeniality oh. Award. <laughs> Mr. G congeniality. <laughs> talent. <laughs> Finally. What about, uh, what about Rudy Giuliani? Would he, uh, I, his name's yes. not mentioned. That I name would, crossed my mind. I would like to see him. Right. He'd have enough uh, public uh, you know, persona out there. Enough, uh, yeah. Yeah. He'd be tough. For one. Yeah. And he, yes, he would be tough. And he's been in government a long time. He knows how to run things. And he's Italian. Yeah. That's good. Italian, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying there you go, that. Sal. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's Italian. And one of those. No, I, I really like the guy. I always have. Yeah. They said he was the right guy to be mayor of New York when the at that yeah. time. Yeah. Right. Great really mayor. Straightened it out. He was all. He was just like not sleeping hardly. Always traveling everywhere. And you know, out, out with the troops. Just like our mayor. He took a city that they said couldn't be governed, and he proved that it could be governed. I mean, they said that yeah. they said New York was you know a basket case, and he right. proved that it could yeah. be, and you could yeah. bring law and order to New York City. Well, that's what you just said touches on every every bureaucracy and every governmental uh, unit you run into. What can we do in the yeah. schools? What can we do? Well, try something. Yeah, I've seen. A, I saw Kelly High School, for example, was at a discipline problem in the '90s, and one teacher had formerly he'd been there, and now he came back, Doctor. Um, Jack Joe Samino, Italian. <laughs> he came in and became, and he said, "No, no more." And they uh, they straightened that out. <laughs> if you goofed off, you stood in the uh, you stood out in the hallway with your book for the rest of the period. Mm. So, <laughs> and he, the guy passed away since then. He was Gary Chico's uh, Ooh, yeah. uh, campaign manager for mayor, by the way. So, for anybody's information, that was. Uh, a call from outer space. It is my wife. I want to know what we were doing. How'd you know? My wife. The final frontier. She doesn't listen to the show, so I can tell you what her nickname is. My nickname for her is Darth Vader. But anyway, yeah, I would like to see Giuliani. How about how about Sheriff Clark? Oh boy, the guy from Milwaukee County. Yeah, would he? But he straightened things out. No, Who it's the guy from Arizona. Yeah, yeah, right. I can't think of oh, the name. Oh, that now. guy too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. three. There's three we know about. I'm yeah. sure there are a lot out there. You know, we don't know about. He got fired here not too long ago, didn't he? Didn't yeah, they let him? He's the looking from for Arizona? a job. Then. He's looking for a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I that would be this. good. Uh, go ahead. So keep continue. <laughs> <laughs> Jack is talking outer space now. Right. Uh, yeah, what? Well, that's a first for me. <laughs> <laughs> Meet the Chicago historians, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. We'll do a it's commercial disgusting. on the weather. Go. Yeah. Commercial about what a the beautiful day it is today. Yeah. More. And it is. I hope we. I hope we keep it up. This has been a weird, weird year. That's right. Mm. For weather here. Mild yeah, winter, rainy spring. Oh, We've got a cold May, front out yeah. west that's coming in. It's going right, to drop. But we set a record, a 140-year-old record for not having any snow in January or, uh -oh. or December or January. We're getting a signal. 
Pardon me, gentlemen, it's time now for a brief intermission. You're listening to Meet the Chicago Historians, and we thank you for it. Well, friends, now that the warm weather has arrived, it's time to plant your flower and vegetable garden. It's not too late to start planting your flowers and vegetable gardens. And I have just the right place for you to go. Get your flowers and vegetable plants. You can go to Pesky's Flower Gift Shop Garden Center and Greenhouse, which is located at 170 South River Road in Des Plaines, Illinois. Pesky's has a very large selection of flowers, vegetable plants, and much, much more. Whatever you need for your flowers or vegetable garden, you can find it at Pesky's. And once again, they are located at 170 South River Road. They are just north of Route 14 or Minor Street and south of Golf Road, which is Route 58, on the west side of River Road. And be sure to stop in and visit their flower and gift shop. Again, Pesky's Flower Gift Shop and Garden Center, located at 170 South River Road in Des Plaines, Illinois. River Road is Route 45, and they are on the north of Route 14 or Minor Street and south of Golf Road or Route 58. You can call Pesky's at area code 847-299-1300 for more information. Again, that phone number is 847-299-1300, or they're located at 170 South River Road in Des Plaines, Illinois. Now, back to our show. Jack? Who, me? You're it's talking to you. me? Yeah, you. Are you yeah. talking to me? <laughs> you must be. I'm the only one sitting in this chair. Okay, <laughs> we're back from our first break like that, and we were still on the uh, subject of an FBI director. And I know that, um, well, whatever will go on, whatever, whatever uh, investigations are there, it will continue. It has very little to do with this guy on top. My, that's why I look at it anyways. It's your guys who are out actually doing it, doing the job, the count. And uh, this guy is supposed to be the face of the uh, Bureau of Investigation. And, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they can do things to tighten certain areas or uh, improve improve uh, ad, uh, attitude and improve uh, uh, policy in some areas. So, anyway, where were we now, gang? <laughs> Somebody else, were we talking about uh, entertainment? And well, mm -hmm. someone mentioned... The name Petrillo before. What was his first name? Wonderful Man. All I know was... James, Petrillo. I believe. James Petrillo. Yeah, yeah that's right. Was head of the Musicians Union. Right. right. Mm -hmm. No sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they ran a tight ship, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. So... He banned so many different songs from being played on the radio. He did? Yeah, one time Bob Crosby was telling me that at one time on the air, you could only play songs like Genie with the Light Brown Hair because there was an Afro band, and that was Patrol and it was all part of it, the unions. And so the ballrooms were playing stuff that really wasn't very popular. Mm -hmm. That's how one of the songs, I don't know if anybody knows a song here called Heartaches. Mm -hmm. Ted remember? Weems, I think. Yeah, Ted yeah, I mean Weems. Recording, yeah. The only reason that became a hit was because of that strike. There was a disc jockey in North Carolina. In the 50s, yeah. He had nothing to play at the radio station, so he went down in the basement and he found hmm. an old transcription of Hardick's. And he played it over and over and over again, and it made it a hit. That's it. I didn't know that story. That's interesting. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But that, uh, several places in Chicago that are gone now, like you said, like the Willowbrook just burnt down back in, in February. Right. Uh, the Aragon sits there like a ghost town. Mm. It's unfortunate. It was, or it, uh, where is it? Lawrence and Broadway. Mm -hmm. I wrestled there. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. You look like a wrestler. <laughs> we had the Trianon. Yeah. on. The tree and on, yeah, the tree and on, on the, the south bear side. One? The Green Mill is still active at uh, Lawrence yeah. and Broadway. Swing bands, basically. Yeah. Uh, oh. 
but there's a lot of private parties, a lot of different events that go on, uh, different conventions where they bring in different orchestras, different bands for the area. So the music is not dead, totally. I mean, if people think mm -hmm. that, uh, being that that's my format, what I do, music of the 20s, 30s, 40s, and the big bands today, some of the good ones, it's surprising on all the stations, and we're on several stations around the world, not only in this country, but in Canada and in England. Mm -hmm. And the average caller to the program is, say, 35, 40 years old. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. tell me it's kind of like a security blanket for them to hear that music. Mm -hmm. It's a the whole Tribune, thing the for Tribune once asked me when I thought about rap, I said it's an overextension of noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's about as rhythmic as a jackhammer. <laughs> you know what the acronym is? You should have seen the mail that I got. For rap is rhythm and... Rhythm and pulsation? No, uh... Rhythm and Can you say this word? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> On radio? <Yeah. laughs> poetry. Rhythm oh, and really? poetry. Oh, oh is that's that what that means? No. <laughs> rap, I guess if you go back, Cab Calloway did Maybe. rap. yeah. When you go back to like many of the Moocher and songs like yeah. that, so yeah, but I it wasn't it wasn't that obnoxious. Uh, a little more musical too, a little yeah. more melodic. Yeah, and you didn't hear all the profanity. Right. Well, that's a cheap shot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was it yeah. true that Jack McGurn owned the Green Mill? Uh, originally, but that's not the guy who owns it now. No. <laughs> so, but yeah. Oh no no no! The Al Capone used to own it. Right. Oh, Capone yeah. did it. Al yeah. Capone owned the Green Mill because you go in there. And uh, they've got scrapbooks in there with pictures of Al Capone in there. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Just ask the bartender; they'll bring it up and show it to you. Where's, where's the Green Mill? Mill? I'm not familiar. Where's this? Where's this? Lawrence located? and Broadway. Lawrence yeah. and Bro on Broadway. You yeah. always set with his back to the wall. Right. Yeah. You're and the old uptown theater. You yeah. know, there's some exactly. conditions people couldn't go out. How do you mean? They couldn't leave it under certain conditions. They couldn't leave the. The establishment, Until they would get all their... Well, I had no problem leaving it. It was just that every time you walked down the street, someone said, hey, man, you got a quarter? <laughs> that was the only problem I had. I mm -hmm. leaving it at one thirty-two in the morning after getting done. Right. Right. Dennis, hmm? I think the Green Mill is at Armitage and Ashland. No, it isn't. No. It's uh, at Lawrence and Broadway. Yeah. Broadway. That was a green... The well, well, that's the green, green door. Definitely a Broadway. No, that, yeah, uh, Lawrence and Broadway. That's a different... Green, all together. Uh, green door? Parp, and parp yeah. is not you might be thinking of the Green Dolphin or something. Dolphin, yeah. the Green oh. Dolphin. Yeah. That's where Bill Porter yeah. used to The Green play. Door is like 81st and Western. Remember that song? Mm -hmm. Midnight. Behind the green One more night No, I uh, then later on, <laughs> it was something <laughs> completely <laughs> different, too. Yeah, yeah. When, the, uh, when the green mill uh, got back going again, uh, that was in my district. Oh, was and it? And we were told that, uh, yeah, we were to go there every day and make sure things are fine and it wasn't overloaded. And oh, it was, it's over. It was overloaded all the time. I know. It appears I know. that way. Yeah. I uh, working that stage with different orchestras and being the announcer to recreate 1940s radio shows. Right. Uh, you've got one little space, and that's mm -hmm. it, and no copy, except the playlist. And so what sometime. we would do is we would tell people to uh, give us your business card. We'll ad lib a commercial for you to have fun with it, and the band would play a jingle. So one night I get a business card and it's from a mortician. <laughs> and so to end the commercial, I'm trying to think of something clever to say. And so at the end of the commercial, I said, remember the Mel and Shirley Funeral Home, they're the last to let you down. That's right. No. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Good one. Well, well, well. <laughs> so then another guy <coughs> is in there, must be his friend, who runs a crematorium. <laughs> and he gives me his card. <laughs> And so I'm saying, what can I do? And at the end of the, the end of the commercial, I said, remember now, look outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> Theater of the mind, you have to the think. Theater of the mind, yes. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Your <laughs> imagination. <laughs> was the last guy to box John L. Sullivan? <clears throat> I don't know who won. Mortician. But all different types of people like good music and, uh, you know, music that doesn't insult your intelligence. No, I'm, I'm surprised there isn't even a more, uh, well maybe people aren't used to going places, not a lot of people they That's part are of too it. used to you know, hearing it at home or you can actually get out with the, you know, the, see, see an event with the naked eye, hear the music, be, in the, uh, be there, you know. Mm -hmm. and well, I think they do that once or twice, they do it more often. If they could. Well if you, yeah, if you get out, uh, it's surprising to see how many people will show up 
at a major concert. I did one with Buddy uh, Buddy Morrill back just before he died in Rockford at that big amphitheater they have there. And he was fronting the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. Mm -hmm. The place is almost sold out. Mm -hmm. Got thousands of people in there. But then people say, well, what happened to good music? It's Basically, there. radio stations. It's there you look for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, you, and everything is on TV and radio and, and uh, yeah, but you TV know, is where, so where can you go? You you know, TV, it, 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 if, you, if you want to continue on in this life, you've got to use your head. You can't sit there and just stare at a television. But that's what they're doing, though. Yeah. Then, you well, know. those are the people that we talk about with the crematorium and the <coughs> yeah, mortician right, yeah. people. You know. Although, on Saturday and Sunday night, C-SPAN 3, mm -hmm. they've got history. Oh, okay. And they got teachers teaching history, and they've got different histories of different events. And that was they're in the First World War now. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great! Yeah. And it's anniversary, hundredth anniversary. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's pretty. It's, it's one the hundredth anniversary. Few things yeah. that are worth yeah. watching. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's you know, it's, it's NPR, PBS are probably two of the mainstays now, yeah. as far as keeping the good things alive. Mm -hmm. The National People's Radio. <laughs> yeah, National <laughs> People's Radio of China, right? <laughs> Politburo system. <laughs> remember the days of just three networks? Oh, sure. And now you've got so much to choose from. Well, I remember it's hard to watch anything. Yeah, when Channel 11 was just starting, they were Brand going around yeah. asking for money. Oh, yeah. It was educational television. Educational. Yeah. 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 I, used to, used to, I used to do that auction at Channel 11. Do you guys right. remember that yeah. Channel 11? Yeah. Where they stuff there. Yeah. You still do it. Wally Phillips and I were doing it one time. Oh, really? Yeah. 11, okay. Yeah, and there's... Somebody gave us this item. We didn't know what it was, and it was hand. All the descriptions were handwritten, mm -hmm. and the thing looked terrible. I didn't know what it was. I just gave it to Wally, and he said, well, that's a piece of art, it's, you know. If it's, and it, there was a lot of dead air going on in between what us. What was it? Well, I can't say. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it was a piece of art, yeah. but what it looked like, I can't tell you. Well, it looked like a piece of something else. I was mm. watching yes. it one day, and they had a big urn. It was about six feet high. And they said it was two thousand years old or something like that. They put, yeah, and they put it on a, a <laughs> post or a statue, you know. Pedestal. And somebody yeah. knocked it over. <laughs> <and it> was <laughs> the <end there>. Whoops! <laughs> did you know there was an announcer on WTTW, Marty Robinson? Yeah, yeah. Did, you, did you know him? Marty. Is he? Is he? I mean, he's he been went gone. To New York the last time I heard. I, I, I don't know if he's all of a sudden, he was gone. He was he was a fixture there, and then all of a sudden, he wasn't there anymore. And I wonder what 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 yeah. he retired or. Oh, he's probably gone now. Yeah, you know, it's been a few just years. Like Franklin though. McCormick and yeah. and a lot of the, the he did for W uh, FMT also, didn't he? Well, he was a WGN, Marty. Was he? Yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah, for the great Nightline. world greatest Nightline. newspaper, was he related to Colonel yeah. McCormick? Yeah, uh, that's hmm. probably why he got there. No, no, no. Frank oh. got there because he had talent. Oh, okay. No, he, he had talent, and any of you who used to listen to him, I used to sure. listen to him, but yeah. the Meister Brow Showcase. Yeah, Meister Brown right. Showcase, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, I've Jack Armstrong. He was the announcer for Jack Armstrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. He was a good, very young Around. voice. I've got a commercial. Cliff Mercer and I stopped over to see Frank one night. And uh, Frank likes his drink. <laughs> You know, and uh, maybe not just. But when you're, I tell you, when you're doing a Meister Brown commercial, <laughs> you shouldn't have a glass in your hand where the ice cubes kind of go in the glass <laughs> when you're talking about Meister Brown beer. <laughs> I'm not saying anything out of school, but uh, <laughs> welcome to broadcasting, right? right? The history of broadcasting in Chicago. That's why there's no lens, right? There's <laughs> no cameras. I remember in the old days driving up to Madison back and forth in the 60s, I'd switch back and forth between Franklin McCormick and Jack Eigen. Remember oh, yeah. Jack Eigen, Eigen, sure. Yeah. Jack Eagle, as yeah. <laughs> Nicholson may portray yeah. him as. Yes. You all remember John DeRemus. Oh, yeah. sure. Right. Yeah. John, John DeRemus. Soothing voice. Soothing voice. Yeah. John DeRemus and I, and who was it? Skip Brzezinski, who was a cameraman for Channel 9. We were down at the Red something or other right down on State Street. It's a little bar off the side of the state. Having a few drinks and we missed the train. <laughs> Skip and I missed the train to get out to Arlington Heights. And so John Dorema says, I got a brand new Lincoln. Why don't you take the Lincoln? <laughs> and then just bring it back tomorrow. So I said, okay. So we drove up and the next morning I, I called John in the morning. I said, John, how you doing? He said, oh, some 
so and so stole my car. <laughs> I said, John. <laughs> I said, you let us use that to get home. We missed the train. <laughs> Tell the cops that. <laughs> I said, well, bring it down. Don't call the cops. I don't want to be stopped on the Kennedy coming in. And we brought it back and dropped it off, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Could have it off the hot list. Yeah. Yeah. But radio is a lot of fun. How about uh, the Bill, Bill Grisky used to be on Midnight and some? I know the name, but I don't know him. Yeah. He, uh, it seemed like he followed later some of these other guys, but... In the same sort of a uh, format, I believe, you know, yeah. music and requests and. Well, there's another J. Andre. Yeah, J. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah J. Yeah. J. Well, unfortunately, J. is no longer around. Wow. Mm. Did you know Alex Burkholder? No, I knew oh, J. He was pretty well. He was in. Uh, oh, what was he in? Channel Five. Channel Nine. Channel Nine. Right. Yeah. What TV he side? Oh, TV. Yeah, he comes to, uh, well, he wasn't on, on the air. He was back wherever he was the there. Yeah, yeah, back. Technician. And uh, uh, now he was one of the bosses there. Mm -hmm. But he's uh, very active with the fire museum with us. Oh, yeah. There all the time. Wrote a couple of books. Yeah. There were several other yeah. people there at GN, yeah. but. Uh, he must have known Carl Grayson, I oh, would yeah, imagine. Sure. Oh, yeah. How about Chatter? Who? Chatter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how, about he, how many people actually knew? For a while, there was two Sears Towers. Mm -hmm. Now there's just one. And that's even gone. Coleman and Arlington. Oh, that oh, the old, uh, the yeah. old yeah. center up here. I still refer to it as, as the Sears Tower. Right. Oh, yeah. Ah. It, it, will, it will never be whatever Still they refer call it. to yeah. Marshall Field. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 So Another old broadcaster is Marty <laughs> McNeely. Remember? Oh, yeah, Marty, Marty sure. McNeely, yeah. Yeah. Channel 9, I believe, for many years. Good boys. Late night, yeah. There's a funny story. Well, it's not, it wasn't funny at the time to me. I was doing weather, television weather, when I've got a face mm. for radio. <laughs> I didn't have a beard, of course. P.J. Hoff. No, not and, quite. Uh, <laughs> uh, for an NBC outlet. And I'm saying, well, we've got a cold front that's coming through tonight. And as it comes through our area, our temperatures are going to fall. <laughs> and when I said that, the map fell off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, just, I was right. <laughs> I just sat down on the set. I didn't know what to do. My wife was watching at home, and she said I looked like I was going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you know, our temperatures are falling tonight, but not quite that fast. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Quick How'd you manage to stage that? Huh? Well, it ended uh -huh. up on the bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say. Mm -hmm. So. Some other, uh, okay, get into weathermen now. Uh, Clint, U Clint, Ewell, Clint Ewell. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, John yeah. Coleman, he started a yeah. weather channel. That's oh, John, right. geez. I guess he's Him still going in California. He, he was the... He the, started the weather channel, yeah. Yeah, but he he had a thing going with... Uh, Seven. Yeah, but who was the guy that did uh, sports? I'm so oh, geez. Bill Frank. Bill Frank. Frank. Bill Frank, yeah. And Flynn I, Daly, Frank, and Coleman. Right. And they news. would screw around with each other. I mean, somebody said if something happens, he would do the weather standing on his head, and the next day he was doing the weather. Well, that was what they called, I think, happy talk in those days. Channel well, this, I think, that, was. Yeah. That was back before yeah. green screen. Right. <laughs> I know. I would take the magnets, and I'd say, let's see where it's going to rain tonight, and throw it up on the map. And <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's real authentic. Wow. I mean, really. Thought that one out, didn't we? Yeah. They were kind of overdoing that laugh happy stuff for a while with the in between every Who remark the, between them. When and the they had the vice president in charge of looking out the window, that was PJ oh, Hoff. Yeah. Yeah. PJ Hoff. Didn't he always wear He's a bow drawing. tie? Mr. Draw. Yellen cut. That was that was uh, Faye, Faye, Faye Flynn. Flynn. Faye Flynn. They were they were partners oh. on see Channel Two. Channel Two. And who was the newscaster? He was coming out of a an elevator and he was swearing like hell. Oh, there's a bunch of Which them. one? <laughs> uh, he was, I don't know, but it was on live TV. Probably Len O'Connor. That sounds oh, like something. Yeah, it was Len O'Connor. Sounds like something okay. Len O'Connor <laughs> yeah. would have done. Uh, I've, uh, maybe he lost his job over that. I don't know. Probably not. I, I did once. Yeah. I'm from the days of broadcasting when you didn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to fill in at a small little radio station in Indiana in my early days. And at the radio station, the owner said, uh, Sunday, so-and-so is not going to be here. Can you fill in Sunday morning and do the gospel program? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, no. I mean, I'm a good Christian and everything, but I don't know all the gospel music. Yeah, but, you know, a Catholic boy, we pay our priest to read the Bible for us, right? Right. <laughs> so I get on there, and, and I introduce a song, and George Beverly Shea, and, Shea. Shea, and I didn't know what his name was, and there's always somebody hanging around the radio station. 
there's always a guy hanging around. And it was my first job, and I was so nervous, I looked over at him, I said, what the hell's that guy's name? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked, I and the light was on. <laughs> <laughs> and this was in the Bible Belt. Mm -hmm. Monday, here's your check. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, we don't need you. You so, know, I, I, it's very obvious now, uh, going through the channels, that uh, you have to be a very, I will just say, pretty girl. Oh, to do weather? To do the so weather. So many weather casters are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well endowed and it, women. Yeah. 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 And I, you know, I'm still a Jerry Taff fan. I like Jerry. And I'm yeah. sure you all know yeah. Jerry. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Channel a friend of mine broke his leg once at MAQ. Really? In the auto demolition in Indiana. They had the, a station promotion, and Jerry was riding one, and Rich hit him sideways, I guess, and broke his leg. Oh. So uh, that's many years ago. Mm -hmm. That's just after Marconi invented radio. <laughs> <laughs> We're going way back now. Did you know uh, Floyd Calber very well? Yeah, he was Floyd. a long name. I mean, for decades he was yeah. in the city. Yeah, sure, and then he did the Today Show. And yeah, and, uh, yeah. Where is he now? He's still around, He's isn't one he? Of them that, I, you know, I, I thought he passed um, away a few years ago. Oh, what is it? Huh. What's John? He does a old-time radio show from... Yeah, five to seven. I'm WDCB. Oh, College of DuPage. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, John you know Russell. That. Yeah, he's not. He, John Russell's of Midwest. He's not, a, he's not a broadcaster. Hmm. That's he sure his, acts like it. It's a, well, it's his hobby. Really. Right. If he works yeah. for the state. Right. And uh, that's his hobby of radio. You have to understand, people, actual broadcasters. We've got teletype under our fingernails. Mm -hmm. I've worked at radio stations so bad that when you flush the toilet, the transmitter would go off the air <laughs> because it would lose its ground. <laughs> you know, doing radio in these small places, you cannot imagine paying your dues before mm -hmm. you make Chicago, New York, or mm -hmm. L.A. Mm -hmm. I was doing news shortly after returning home from Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. and the radio station had no air conditioning. Mm. It was 10 o'clock at night, so I opened the window and around the middle of a cornfield. Well, I'm reading the news, and somebody sets off a string of firecrackers on the windowsill. <laughs> I don't remember what I was thinking, but I remember kicking the chair out and going down on the floor, and I'm looking for the pot, trying to shut it down. And if I were caught that person, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today. I'd probably mm. be doing life. Nobody would have convicted you. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I would have been convicted. <laughs> but the bad thing about it, nobody was calling to see if I was okay. <laughs> so that puts your ego in right. the right place, which you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you I'm a person too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, and radio, so many different things can happen. So many things that you can't imagine. If you're doing an all-night show, say, how many of you have gotten tired, and you think, well, I'll just close my eyes for a second. Mm. Oh yeah. Have you ever done that? We're just going like that. You're driving too. And then 20 <laughs> minutes later, well, you don't do it there. But 20 <laughs> minutes later, you wake up. That happened to me. I was playing Artie Shaw's Concerto for Clarinet, which is 11 minutes long. Mm. And I was working at an ABC station. I thought, well, I'll close my eyes for a minute. Yeah. So I closed my eyes. And when I woke up, I heard this noise. <laughs> and it's old fashioned. Yeah. Uh, I had fallen asleep. I slept through ABC News. <laughs> I slept through a whole 20 minutes of commercials that were supposed to be played. Mm -hmm. And again, nobody was calling. So, I mean, it puts it on, you know, I mean, you, you really get your ego adjusted. Did anybody know? So what was the first nobody, words out I of your I never said anything. Yeah. Nobody ever knew. Yeah. No <laughs> words out of your mouth to acknowledge your <laughs> trip well, to the bathroom or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, those little things. That's the fun part about doing this. And I can see why you guys get together, because it's a lot of fun. Listening to you guys, you've all got a lot of talent to add here. The, yeah, there's a famous... The pay isn't great. <laughs> when, I was, when I was... Talent? What's that? <laughs> when well, I John was here's gonna, John's going to throw in $120 <laughs> to each one of you oh. today. Oh. All right. right, John? That'll be a first. Yes. Yes. I'm talking to you. Yeah, the all sky will thing. fall. Hold your <laughs> breath. You might <laughs> turn blue. He has, <laughs> he has this old money with Jefferson Davis's picture on it. That is that what it is? That's going back, yeah. Probably Some Confederate work. money. You know, when I when I was in the service, I was over in France, and my the, the the phony place that they they assigned me to other than what I really had to do was AFN oh really armed forces radio network? right yeah. Ar armed forces radio network and uh, armed forces network 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw some of the stuff that went on over there, and it was uh, how they ever lasted on the air. I don't know. <laughs> Good Lord. All uh, different, different things people pull on you while oh you're on the air? Oh, my wow. God, yeah. yeah did awesome. did you ever have someone set fire to your... Yeah, that's the old myth <laughs> that they would set fire to your copy as you're reading it on the radio. Oh, what, uh, being new at a station and being a rookie, I had somebody who said, we got to get this on the air right away. And I said, what, what do I do? Well, you play a news bulletin, put it on. A little 3,000 watt FM station in the middle of nowhere. So I read it and it says, a body was found in a cornfield, had been stabbed 27 times, shot 15 times. Please suspect foul play. <laughs> 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 did you ever run into that mime who did an all-night show? <laughs> <laughs> I'd been better off being a mime, I think. Uh, you know. How about some Ted Baxter types? There must oh, be a few Ted, of those out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, we worked at the same station at once, you know, <laughs> a long time ago. He, uh, not Ted Baxter, but the, what's the actor? The actor, the actor, the actor Ted, Ted Knight. Was him, Ted Knight? Ted Knight, Ted Knight. Ted Knight, yeah. Ted Knight, yeah. yeah. Did you? He worked at uh, Katie... Really? W, uh, KCAA out in Los Angeles. So he was, his character he drew from so he people. Really he really was a back. radio man. Yeah, he was he a radio man. He had you know. a good voice, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he, he drew his character from yeah. from radio. Thing, real life, yeah. Oh, you know, in, in radio, do you all remember WKRP? Right. Oh, well, yeah, in Cincinnati. Yeah. 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 yeah, when that came on the air, they used to call all the radio stations asking for stories, different things. I've worked with people like that little news director. Got that was a fun show. Yeah, that it was fun, that. but yeah, yeah. they would ask for live things. <laughs> like, they threw the turkeys out of the airplane. <laughs> right, and they didn't know they could fly. <laughs> Always I thought <laughs> turkeys could fly. <laughs> that happened to Is that right? Show. They, they, they said, dangerous. anything happened to you? I said, well, I was doing a remote broadcast from a Pioneer stereo store <laughs> up in Wisconsin, and while I was doing the broadcast, the store was held up. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm in the back of the store, and I'm going, we're broadcasting live from, and I've seen these guys, and they're not thinking, oh, no, don't turn this way. You know? <laughs> and they used a Johnny Fever portrayed, guess oh, yeah. who? Yeah. The yeah. guy, yeah, but they never knew that was back there, because I was way in the back by the speakers. Yeah. We're yeah. doing a live, you know, broadcast, a 30-minute program <laughs> from there. Now that you've mentioned, <laughs> not to totally change the subject, we mentioned the FBI before. When I was working from 86 to 90 in Chicago Lawn Station, 63rd and St. Louis, we had an incident where one of the banks on Archer Avenue, which there are many, they were talking to someone from the FBI downtown about a previous robbery there. So they were talking, while they're on the phone, talking to the agent, in comes another stick up. <laughs> so the vice president, whoever she, I think it was a lady, said, uh, agent, uh, <clears throat> they're in there, they're holding us up right now. Night, night, right this instant, you know. So, Mr. FBI oh, no. goes and gets his supervisor to call a supervisor of communications about the whole thing. He didn't know. Inter- they're, they're just relaying it right away. So, there's a, <laughs> an example. You know. Obviously, they didn't get combat pay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, what do we do now, you know? <laughs> you it, was, it was going down right as they were, she was talking to him. So, didn't mean to interrupt him, but you know, all things. Oh, no, no, no. I see where, it, where it's coming from. But, yeah, you know, I couldn't together. say anything. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't yeah. want to get shot at again. I had yeah. just gotten home. <laughs> you know. Well, I think I'd what ask the cooks they wanted to say a few <laughs> words to the audience. Would you like to say a few words about yeah. why you're holding us? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> uncle was in an accident in the city, and the cops were there doing the report. While yeah. they were doing it, he got held up. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, no. so, so he goes back to the cop. He said, I think I just held me up. Hold on, I'll call in the station. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really, that's a real story. Yeah. <laughs> a, a friend of mine, he was uh, driving a truck. He was also a wrestler. <laughs> he gets somebody trying to break, rob him or break into his truck. Oh, and he gets him, and he throws him, puts him in a hammer lock, throws him in the back of the truck, closes it, and he, he stops the cop to tell him. The guy says, oh, you better let him go. He can get you for kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, these are true stories now, guys, you know. Wow. So he actually drove into the station. You know, we get, I mean, you, you know any dogs like that in your job, Bill? A lot. Yeah, yeah. A lot. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh Good boy. thing that there's a certain number of, Competent folks out there to <laughs> handle everything, am I right? Yeah. Well, and then right now it's time for what? Now for it's time for another brief intermission. Oh, thank God. You're listening thank to you Meet the you Chicago know. Historians. Have a good show, good show. Do you remember?
Well, friends, the warm weather is here, finally. And now is the time to think about your roof, siding, and gutters on your home or your place of business. We could get some really heavy rainstorms in the next few months, so be sure the roof, siding, and gutters are in good shape. You don't want mold or mildew in your attic or your crawl space, or drip, drip, drip on the ceilings in your rooms, or have your walls damaged by a leaky gutter or bad siding. So don't have double expense. Sooner or later, you're going to have to get it repaired. So call Besh Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Gutters at area code 630-616-1359. Mike Besh will drive over in his shiny red truck with ladders on top, and Mike will look over your roof, siding, and gutters and give you an estimate and go from there. So don't have double expense. Call Besh Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Gutters for a free estimate at 630-616-1359. That's Besh Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Gutters at area code 630-616-1359. Call today for a free estimate. Once again, Best Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Gutters at area code 630-616-1359. Now back to our special edition of Meet the Chicago Historians. Jack? Ah, welcome back, everybody. We're having a very lively conversation, thanks to Mr. <laughs> O'Farrell. <laughs> Let's focus. Dennis, John, William McCloskey, Michael, Patrick, o. Henry, O'Toole, O'Farrell. Dennis? Yes, I'm Swedish. Dennis, okay to call you that. <laughs> what county do your parents come from? And, and, what, and what is your ethnic? <laughs> Could you, you tell us a, what your ethnic are you all background Irish now, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what they told me. You know, it's really funny. People think the Irish are so... so um, Sentimental or whatever. They, Irish hmm. Americans are, but the Irish themselves are very, well, they're, they're people, who, they, they mature early in life. They have to get out and work. And, uh, well, we have to. Like, huh? We have to. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, seriously. They can be very crass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is a nice word. <laughs> yeah. And we just lost, well, two months ago now, my buddy Joe Mescal, born and, born and bred there. I mean, he had a yeah. very, very, uh, like, and his, and his wife, too, a very, like, <coughs> Not bitter, but like a like a cold, uh, matter of fact type of way of looking at life. You know, hmm. like Joe me, I'd be I'd still be uh, reading my comic books and watching Disney World, and they'd be out working for a living or something. So, anyhow, <laughs> shall we get to our regular topic, or should we wait till later? What do you want to vote on it? It's everybody raise their hand. Remember, right? we're in Chicago now. <laughs> yeah, Chicago. <laughs> We have to have a couple of precincts will be held back. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I remember. Now, that's, this, here's another interesting thing about this happened in the year 2000, and this year, heard people say talking about the electoral college. Hmm. Well, when did they start that? <laughs> <laughs> 1787. <laughs> that's yeah. when they started it. Yeah. So I remember at home with the kids, just to give the introduce the idea that there was such a thing. We'd say, and I, Dad's off this weekend. We're going to vote on where we want to go to, out to eat. I said, Jen, you get 200 electoral votes. Michelle's got 200 electoral votes. Your mom's got 400 electoral votes. And I have 700 electoral <laughs> votes. <laughs> so yeah, even the idea of introducing the term was there. But, I mean, yet people don't have a, don't have a clue about that. Mm -hmm. Anywho, uh, we were doing a special topic of uh, the reality, police in, in reality and, and, and uh, common image uh, 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 from, uh, from, our, from our popular fiction. On television or radio, or movies, and and uh, to what the real story. Yeah, is. I mean, mm -hmm. there, I think there's probably not an occupation where there's more blurring of right. the two mm -hmm. than that. Would you say, Bill? Yes, yeah. I I completely agree. Yeah. The best true to life cop show I remember is Car Fifty Four. <laughs> <laughs> Better than Drag. <laughs> Barney <down>. Miller. <laughs> <laughs> there were, I mean, well, at least what they were doing, they were creating, tr treating people as people, not just as a. Jack Webb, he came along with Drag that later as Adam Twelve, and he was doing a good job. But it was more like, almost like a training film, right? You know, with something. You know, you're like talking about just the, the museum, facts, man. We call it a procedural. 
in, in the uh, show. They call that a procedural, a show like the, yeah. the one that Jack Webb initiated, trying to show what real police work right. is like. That's yeah. He seldom used his gun. I think they counted up that in, in all the years that he was on Dragnet, he only fired his gun like three times. That which they sense. said was accurate yeah. because the average police officer is not out engaging in, you know, weekly gun battles. Now, maybe in Chicago <laughs> today, that, but we're talking on the 1950s when the no. show was on. Better not use your gun. That's right. Pardon? You better not use your gun. I, I'm talking about the police, though. I am. Your gun. The police. Yeah. Oh. No, or what's the story on why so many Chicago policemen, especially in the older days, were of Irish heritage? How did that come about? No, um, probably the language. And people, okay. people coming over and well, getting the job. were like that too. Even yeah, firemen yeah. were like that. German, even, uh, even Irish. Uh, they came later. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Irish were the only immigrants or whatever who, they call who spoke English. From well, the moment you know they what? The, in the, the whole, uh, the yeah, whole fire department of Chicago. Yeah. Every other. Uh, you would go to different houses, right. and that <laughs> house would be uh, Italian. Yeah, the next one would be Polish. The next one would be Irish. And you had to stay. But they still you know, you had to stay out of there if <laughs> you didn't like it. They're and if the captain of that house didn't want you because you were of a different nationality, so you can see how that elevated itself into racism. Right. You know, well, it, it, it's just, uh, it was the same thing. What really. was that station on the south side, 21, that was all black? 12. 12. 12, yeah. Downtown. And this, this where yeah. supposedly they invented the fire pole? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, uh, engine nineteen, all black. A lot of a lot of them. Truck eleven, right. all black. You know, mm -hmm. and and that is where they sent a a white officer as a place to punish you, mm. which they did to me. Was that Bill Kugelman? Yes, <laughs> they did to me. Uh, what when, kind of when we started did you to have working with them? Were well, they okay? If good, I had a good time there. Right. I had a good time. Right. That was the time also that they started to integrate. Mm -hmm. And the blacks didn't want to leave, well. you know, to go to a white house. Mm. And the whites didn't want to come there. But they did start to integrate and things, yeah, worked out good. One of the bosses came up to me and said, I know you can handle this, Bill. Oh, yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> what are you doing? And the reason that, that I was sent there was because we were talking about a contract. The, the union was talking about getting a, a written contract, mm -hmm. and uh, they knew that things were going to come up in the future leading up to 1980 when I called for the strike. So, so it's a sort of preemptive move on their part. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, know, same, the same thing happened. If, if you don't shut up, yeah. you'll, you'll get to a, a, a worse place. Mm. <laughs> George Gannon was a captain of police on the job. You may know the name. Yes. He was yeah. the one that uh, he got himself elected as a representative on the uh, pension board, the only one for active at the time. The only one that was one for the active and the other you know, for uh, retirees or whatever. And he showed them they were going to have a little secret meeting. He said, well, if we can have this secret meeting, I'm going to get the wagon over and take you in the station under the Illinois uh, Illinois uh, open, open Meetings Act. Open right. And uh, so they actually got the law changed to give it a gannon. They actually yeah. changed it so you would have separate representatives for lieutenant, captain, sergeant, and Below the rank of sergeant, so they break it up. You know, get rid of it. they ran a few ringers in to make sure. And of course, he's dead and gone now. But uh, <laughs> ready? Gotta go. Well, thanks. Good deal. Sal. Okay. Yeah, we come back. Nice meeting you. you promise? Yeah. Right. I promise. Okay. Next week. I'm talking next to next now. Right. June yeah. the nineteenth. <laughs> so nice meeting, meeting you, gentlemen. Yes, we'll I'll be here June nineteenth. Dennis. Dennis is dead. Is set up. Yeah. From a different, a from the, is that a deviation from the third? I, I never had a business card till I retired. Third, uh, I well, I have one now. Monday of the month. still working. <laughs> of the month? Yeah. Third Monday of the month. Yeah. No, the ninth, June 19th. Yeah. Thank you. It's Monday. Thanks. Yeah, you. but it's the third Monday of the month, right? I yeah. guess so. <laughs> I, I don't have the. Yes, I'll, there it is right there. I'll leave you with right. these words of wisdom. Don't yeah. step in anything soft. If you do, you know what to call it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Words to Bum. Good night. Cow pies. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yes, from the country. Did you ever hear that song, The Ballad of Cow Patty? See you Take care. <clears throat> so, okay, police perception. Uh, now, this is National Police uh, uh, Memorial Month, and uh, our member Tom McKenna is there with his brother Dennis and the, the band, the uh, pipes and drums of the police department, uh, as, as part of the program. 
And uh, it was a number of years ago, our two daughters lived in D.C., and we'd be down visiting. We just happened to be there at the time. So I knew he was there, so I called him on his cell phone. <laughs> Where are you? He said, oh, I said, we're just across the river. We'll see you, you know. So, But, but they, they go every year, and it's, um, is it okay to say something about your, your son, John? Yeah, if you want. Bill, Bill's uh, son, John, uh, if anyone out there doesn't know, lost his life on the job, killed by someone who open, admitted co an open court admitted that he offed him, offed him a pig. Offed him a pig. So it was no accident. No. No oh. remorse. And, uh, Should that's have been first-degree murder. 30 years right. ago. Uh, yes, a little, a little over 30, 30 years. In yeah. Chicago here? Uh, it wasn't in Chicago. Oh. It was in uh, DuPage Trooper. County. Oh, well, DuPage area. County. Yeah. Well, and and yeah. we just had it. What, what, was that, what month was that? Jeez, November 10th that was, was the 30th anniversary. Yeah. And they had a dedication out in Itasca. They put up not one but three big signs, and they called it the uh, John Kugelman Memorial uh, interchange. Interchange yeah, well, uh, was it? Yeah. And uh, boy, I get uh, I get people always now coming up to me and saying, "Hey, I saw the sign. I saw the sign." You know. I wasn't I able to make it. I'm sorry. Well, I wish uh, I wish we didn't have to say that. No, but, right, uh, right. You know what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do about it. Thirty uh, He wanted ago. to be a police. Was he, he killed by a, by a vehicle? Was he run no. over? Or was he well, shot? he was killed by a vehicle. First time in the state of Illinois where a vehicle was used as a murder that weapon. Was, that's what I thought. Yeah. It was that he was killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, ran, uh, you know, ran into him and used it and uh, as a weapon. Uh, he now is out and living in Franklin Park. No mm. Yeah. When you say it was not, it was not considered first degree murder. Nope, it wasn't. Nope. I I thought DuPage County being out there would be uh, very very tough on it. And what was uh, their What was their explain? I mean, how did they explain it was? They the didn't explain anything they to me. Didn't. No, and I and I at that time didn't. You know, yeah. Didn't think nice. to ask them yeah. about it, but I thought it would turn out a hell of a lot more. Right. Now uh, and and with with the people I know, we went to to uh, the Springfield, to the legislature, and it's now a life uh, sentence mm -hmm. for if you Killing kill a, a law, uh, enforcement law enforcement, right? right. Bill, what was your son doing at the time he was hit by this car? Was it essentially a hit and run? Or? He, no, he, um, uh, they were chasing this guy, this okay. kid. Okay. And uh, uh, John set up a roadblock. Got it. And as they do, they, they put the car in the way and then they get out, draw their gun, and point it at the at the uh, uh, at the offender. Um, this guy just went right into him. No. Used him as that. Uh, at the the uh, dedication, I was approached by a and I don't have it with me now. I usually do. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, I was approached by a guy that went on the job with John, and his job was a, uh, uh, he had retired, but uh, his job was a, uh, what what do they call it, uh, Jack? A, that was uh, a technician or something? Uh, no, no well, it wasn't an an ET. He was the range master. Oh, okay. Oh, range yeah. master. Yeah. And, and that morning, Johnny called him and said, hey, I got to go down and I got to qualify. Uh, you know, on can you fix it up? Yeah. And he says, yeah, sure. He says, come on down late, and, and you know, I'll be there, and we'll, we'll get it done. Well, you know, then this happened. And so uh, what, what this guy's job was was to collect Johnny's guns and any ammo that he had and, uh, you know, make a, uh, uh, a report out. And uh, what he did was uh, he took Johnny's uh, service gun, and he couldn't, he, he got the, the clip out, the mag out, but uh, then he couldn't clear the gun. He had to almost take it apart. And here, stuck in the chamber, was a shell. And it had a big, big dent in it. In other words, it, it stuck. From the impact. A live shell, right? A live shell. But it was From the yellow. impact of the, of the car hitting Well, no, 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 no. This was before. No. He, uh, Johnny had a, 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 a gun uh, uh, 38 uh, chief on his ankle he had an ankle that was ruined I'll uh, our next taping I'll uh, come and show you but uh, 
uh, this they they just don't know. Hmm. If Johnny had had tried to shoot the guy and it, jammed. and it just didn't go off, you can see the indent on it that uh, th that the firing pin struck it. Uh, maybe it was just one out of a billion right. that turned out to be a phony, you know, shell. Hmm. Uh, we'll never know. So you don't know he might have tried to fire and and the gun jammed. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Johnny was a good shot. A I mean, that's all we did was hunt and, and uh, fish and and that. And he was, he was he was good at it. And I know his gun was always clean. Um, but we'll never know. That's know. what I've always thought is the advantage of a revolver. That revolvers almost never jam. I mean, yeah, there's it can happen, but compared to an automatic, it's much easier for an automatic to jam. Way. Yeah, I'm but a revolver it, guy. Yeah. In high humidity, though, they tend to get gummed up. Hmm. Yeah, um, they have some new oil, I guess you'd call it, right. out now that that uh, uh, you use, and and it's very good, okay. very good. But uh, yeah, that was it, and and uh, uh, what a what a great uh, department that is, the Illinois State Police. Uh, I just, uh, I'm sure they get their trouble. I mean, everybody does in every, sure. every career, but, uh, uh, they, they just did a marvelous thing. Really, really great. It's good to see when they, they function properly, like as they should, you know. Yeah. Like yeah. as critical as I am, there's areas where and the CPD is just number one at, you know. Yeah. Right. Well, and you know what, they're at this, uh, uh, dedication. There were judges there. There were politicians there. There were, there were uh, the ex-directors of the state police. Uh, uh, they really did a number. They so really that was thirty years a, prior. Yeah. Thirty years. Yeah. Now, did he have a family? No. Oh. No. Well, he had a wife. Okay. He had a wife. Uh, a widow. Now she's no remarried, kids. but no kids. Uh. Yeah, they didn't have any kids. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Very sad. Yeah. How old was he? He was 27. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my God. 27. Oh, Funny story is, is that after this happened, the captain of the District 2 was in Elgin is where he was assigned. And the captain called me and said that uh, uh, I should you know, notify the family that they are going to dedicate uh, the training facility in Bourbon A. That's where the Illinois State Police have their training. And, uh, you know, it'll be a, a big thing. They're going to dedicate that to them. And uh, uh, several weeks later or a month later, whatever it was, uh, he called and he says, well, Bill, he says, uh, you know, notify your family that uh, we're going to dedicate District 2 in Elgin to John. I said, wait a minute. You told me it was Bourbon A. Well, he said, and then he started doing a dance. And I said, come on, Jim, come on. What, what do you, you know, what's up? And he says, oh, okay. He says, uh, we're, we're kind of like the same. He, he, he knew who I was. He said, uh, I found out that uh, uh, the training tower where you were supposed to, what do they call that, uh, slide down the rope and all of that, uh, you know, that was part of it. He went there for this uh, squat training. They call it something else. And uh, he flunked. Heavy weapons. He was Tactical. he was afraid of uh, heights. Mm. And uh, I said, "Oh, okay." And he said, uh, "Why?" And he I said, "Well, I went out to his place. He bought a place in Island Lake. Him and his wife. And I went out to put a roof, a new roof on on a little." storage place that they had out in the back and uh, needed needed some uh, new roof some shingles i said pick them up and i'll come out and help you okay i got them pa okay i'll be out set the ladder up it's only you know 14 feet mm -hmm. and uh i got one bundle of on me and i took it up and I stayed up there and and uh, I got it and you know I'm looking around and he says hey 
I won't say what I call them. <laughs> Come on. Afraid of heights. I'm not going up and down this ladder, you know. Get that stuff up here. Get, oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, needless to say, I put the whole roof on myself. Afraid of heights. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't like heights. And at that time, he was on the fire department list to come on, mm -hmm. and I guess it's a <laughs> it's a good thing he didn't come on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, Vertical. we laughed about that out there. Yes, yes, I guess so. I never knew that. Yeah. Those things they just you, you can't explain them. Yeah, they're just, yeah. yeah. People have a phobia. Yeah. My, yeah. my one daughter, she's afraid of like being inside. We were down at uh, what was the place in Tennessee? Mammoth, you know, it's I mean, was one of those uh, caves. Yeah, okay. something like that. And I don't think it was that one, but and she, we got down there, and she felt like everything was closing in on her. You know, yeah. that was, she couldn't help it. You know. Claustrophobia. Tell me, Fire Charlie Brown. Rock City. Do you have pantophobia? What's that? The fear of everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I thought that was Lucy. That's yeah, that's Lucy in one of the peanuts. <laughs> right. Do you have pantophobia? What's pantophobia? The fear of everything. <laughs> Charlie says that's it. I tell you that's what. That's it. The yeah, first time real. that I had to take an MRI, oh, uh, I, I had to go back the next day and apologize to the kid that was running it. I got out of there. I, that drove me crazy. <laughs> yeah. But you yeah. can get open ones now where you stand up. Even Is that, that right? one. Even that. I go to the one, it's called the Claus, upright. Claus. Right. Well, I had one, and I mean, it was like, Right up against oh, your yeah. nose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it oh. took like 45 minutes. Yeah. And it's noisy. Yeah. Uh, mine wasn't noisy. but oh, I yeah, didn't care about the, about they gave the you noise. Ear, yeah. They give you earplug and they play yeah. Yeah. rap music or something. This know. place I go to is in, uh, it's not Glenview, it's, it's uh, Deerfield. Oh, it's called head. the Upright MRI, and you sit there, hmm. and they have the TV on, and it doesn't bother you at all. Oh, yeah. it's, it's the best thing that happened to me. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, getting back to that first one, I said, well, can somebody come here and be with me? And Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So I had my daughter uh, come, and, and uh, uh, it started, and, and uh, the thing started up. And I, th I think I just, I had it for my knee, mm -hmm. whatever it was. And uh, but even with that, it brings you all you the know, way through it. I yeah, you got to go all the way through, and all of a sudden, wham! Bang, I felt something hit my my leg, my knee, and go through, bang, bang, and the guy came running in and and uh, shut it off, and and I said, what what's the matter? Says, something, the magnetism, right? Grab something. Mm -hmm. Well, Beth is not saying anything. She had shoes on that had little bows, you know, mm. and uh, they were stapled on or whatever it was. Well, yeah, it metal. pulled it off, and that, and I, I, I looked at her, and I said, Beth, I said, I think we just screwed up a million-dollar machine, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it, it's that strong that yeah. it took it right off her shoe. What, what drove me, well, not nuts, but it would go in little increments, like an eighth of an inch, oh, boom. Boom, boom. Mm -hmm. oh. I feel like you're in a torpedo tube. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. <yourself>. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I remember the first and the time. And the one in, at the one at, at an upright, or not an upright, a uh, the open yeah. out in wherever it was that I was at, she said, what did you do for a I said, I was a fireman for yeah. for so many years. I said, I, you know, I never was afraid to go in the dark hallways or uh, she says it's funny she says we have a lot of firemen that cannot stand this thing mm. you know mm. so so that's why they got you sitting down yeah oh am i glad i found that place right i remember the first time i was very it was also very tight but it was also kind of afraid the next time i went they gave me some kind of a something to sedate me or something mm. And I was like begging them, please, I want to come on. No. And they, they were taking me out. I said, no, no, let me go through. I was begging to go through, so it made a difference. <laughs> well, and I did that too. Uh, m the The day after they had my retirement party at the White Eagle, I had to go and get an MRI, mm -hmm. and uh, I had I had my kidney taken out, and I had an M have to have an MRI for that. And uh, they gave me, the doctor gave me whatever it was. Uh, and, and there was like three or four pills I took. 
think I took about three, wow. three or four of them, and I could hardly walk out of the place. I completely fell asleep uh, when I got in there, and, and thank God, you know, because I had to go in. Yeah, no, no, they were driving. <laughs> so, I wonder how many people's phobias get worse as they get older. I know in my case, I have much more of a fear of heights now than I did when I was a kid. You couldn't get get me up by a gutter to save my life. I, I think that's with everybody. Uh, yeah, whether it's your vision kind of goes down, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Like wisdom. <laughs> yeah. With wisdom, probably. Wisdom, yeah. I saw maybe, but, you know, roofs. Yeah. And I, when I was a little kid, I think I froze or did something to an eardrum. And that that might have something to do with it. But uh, I, I, I don't like ladders either. For Local 1. Of the iron workers, and I, you know, height never bothered me. And I thought, well, that's the last thing my kid would have, <laughs> but it yeah, sure was. Yeah, I go up on my roof periodically, so I, don't, I, don't. I like going up on the roof. I like to get, a, I go to a two story building, and you get up there, you can see, you get a completely different perspective oh, yeah. on the yeah. neighborhood. I mean, I can see oh, the church wow. steeples, and I take my camera up sometime and take pictures. It's, you just get, it's the same neighborhood you've lived in all your life, but you get such a different, different view perspective. Of it from just, yeah. just that right. Is this a flat roof, John? Flat, you know, oh, yeah, flat well, roof. Yeah. But if, if you're yeah, on, right. on the ground looking up, it doesn't look that high, but when you get on the top oh, yeah. looking down, yeah. it's completely different. Be up there in the trees like that, and you can see the tops of the trees and the buildings. You get a, It's just a completely different perspective of the Getting getting back to the the police, you know, and uh, the time I had on the on the fire department, we would get called by the police a lot. Come on, we need a ladder, and you know we got a we got a burglar up there or whatever it was, and and uh, I got to the point where I'd say, guys, put the ladder up, okay, and then nobody would move. Go ahead, hey guys, <laughs> come on, I got you. the ladder. Be my after, guest, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I can understand that. <laughs> I can understand uh, that. But uh, I've got a question I wanted to ask. We're getting we're nearing a break, but mm -hmm. when when you were in the police department, did did police officers ever talk about television police shows in which they thought were were just yeah. totally oh, unrealistic? Yeah. Did you ever sure. did you ever discuss? Oh TV sure. We, shows we, in matter of fact, two two of us, Eddie Dickerson, myself, and Sergeant Thurston McClendon, were at a it was afternoon shift. It was nice weather, and we were watching, uh, taking a missing persons report for a family. Well, Starsky and Hutch was on the TV oh, show. I never watched that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and that they got some situation with a guy, and they want to show him. So they go both put their guns down, saying, "Here, we'll take you without the gun." We go, "Oh, brother, <laughs> you're going to put your gun down?" You know, yeah. we got a you know maniac there with. A, but uh, that was that was about the. Worst one I ever saw like that. We all go, oh my God, look at this. Was there was there a, a cop show that you thought was was realistic other than Dragnet? Were there other shows that you thought? Well, they, they got were... better. Uh, Hill Street, you know. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hill Street okay. Blues. What they were doing too, they were more getting into more of the personality and not just like as I said, an illustrated training film. Like a soap yeah. opera. Not just action. Chicago, action. Chicago yeah. Fire is pretty much a soap opera. No. What about Barney well, Miller? Chicago, Chicago you know, PD. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, we we rented some things from the museum to okay. Chicago Fire and that and and we had the Chicago PD a yeah. uh, couple of those people over and uh, uh, at the museum and uh, uh, we also had a couple of a couple of coppers Chicago coppers there and and the one guy said to to these people he says you know what I watch your show. He says, and you guys are doing the things that we would love to be doing. <laughs> there you go, yeah. There you go. The good old days. Well, on YouTube, one, they one got thing. a spoof on it called Chicago Sanitation. Yeah. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, yeah. Streets and sand. Yeah. Yeah. Chicago sand. <laughs> the, uh, the one thing they don't get into, and you have to, you have to uh, agree with me on this one, is they never show the political influence. Like, oh, you know, God, yeah. if, if you rocked the boat somewhere, you wouldn't be in that same position for, for a week or two. You'd be... Dumped somewhere. Well, Hill Street <laughs> Blues would get into that because remember yeah. his chief was politically connected, mm -hmm. and they, they would get into that at times about the political yeah. influence from downtown. Yeah. But most shows, yeah, or Barney Miller would get into that, of course, with mm -hmm. Luger and. Yeah. Right. What did they think? What did real police think of Barney Miller? Oh, that was um, accurate. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> yeah. That, we, that we, was we, a more accurate. Yeah, you enjoyed. It. Barney Miller was perfect. Uh, the way it was set up, like it was almost like bring the characters through the stage, you know, yeah, where they're yeah. brought in, brought in there, and uh, yeah. 
they oh. were not on the street, you know. They yeah. just saw him in the office. Yeah, the yeah mostly. Office 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 I remember office. he got injured, and they put him in an ambulance. Yeah. In 20 Hardly minutes, gentlemen, 20 minutes time later, for the commercial. He, uh, we'll be right back. Hold that thought. These messages of interest and importance. Just like uh, Gerald Moore's. Do you know someone that has constant pain of their low back, neck, shoulder, knee, or wrist? Have they tried medications, exercise, physical therapy, or chiropractic, and nothing seemed to make it better? Well, I may have your answer. Why not try a napropath? Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Wayne Chickowitz, and I've been practicing 30 years treating pain. I'm board certified and hold a diplomat in pain management. For your convenience, we have two locations in Cicero, 3602 South 61st Avenue, 708 656 or in Villa Park at 122 West St. Charles Road, Suite 1A, 630 833 4007. Why not try a napropath and stop the pain today? You are Back to our discussion, Jack. What are you talking about? Miller, do people think? Or yeah, right. yeah well, I'm curious at what real police would have thought of popular television shows like Barney Miller. And well, Barney Miller is uh, pretty much close to life. I mean, just a, a, a little bit of a tweaking. A real character. You, you would think show. that it was yeah. a very realistic. I mean, as a, I would think it would be a realistic portrait. Like well, I remember one time on there, Barney was supposed to be doing. Uh, uh, time for contempt of court on some court case and he was going to be taken in and Wojo gave him as a gift of soap on a string so uh, <laughs> you know it was just uh, no no need for explanation but that was one of them and then one time <laughs> one of them gave him a gift of like one of those western type ties that oh, yeah, string straight, ties, you know, yeah, with, with the and, and they put him under hypnosis. Ties. And <laughs> Mojo goes, "I give it to Barney, and he likes it." You know, he's under hypnosis. <laughs> and then someone came in from outer agency. And he goes, uh, "Is that your uh, deputy?" He called him or something. <laughs> was wearing that. Whoa. But uh, I always liked it when they would have uniform day, where all these all these detectives had to had to yeah. appear in uniform, and, and yeah. you got Luger there with his, his right. eagles on his on yeah. his uh, shoulder straps. And uh, yeah, an yeah. inspector in New York is like. There's a lot more. Inspector in, in the Chicago Police Department is like a snitch, uh, like the washroom monitor. That's in New York, oh. it's a rank. All they, all they got is like, rank, yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a what we call an exempt rank. Yeah, an exempt yeah. Rank. You yeah. can be you like can your, your career chief. ranks are like patrolman or now police officer, sergeant, patro- uh, sergeant, lieutenant, captain. The others are directors, yeah. uh, deputy this, deputy that, uh, uh, commanders. You know, those are the ones that can be taken away from you in a minute. Sure. But well, yeah, that's an exempt right, like superintendent or deputy yeah. superintendent. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. yeah. What? Fire department, any rank above battalion chief is exempt. Is it exempt? No. The exe- exempt is the, 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 like the, what? Easy come, easy go. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I know they've used that on people too, and, and, uh, and the police. I know this was true. Uh, in the police department, captain is uh, a civil service rank. Yes, yeah. that's yes, yeah, yeah. that's not they an exempt. They call it rank. career. Yeah. Now, you know. mm-hmm. yeah, they yeah. don't have an exam for that anymore, do they? For captain? For captain? I don't think so, Jack. Do they make it a make maybe? It an exam, I don't know. Convert yeah. it to an exam. They list? did. Uh, oh yeah. I don't know. Did. I never. <laughs> yeah. Did any officers ever criticize Dragnet for maybe being too emotionless and uh, sound effects? I could see that going the other way. I it was such a parody much. thing. You know, after well, a while. critics Supposedly. parodied him yeah. I mean, with that, you know. Just, just the facts, ma'am. Uh-huh. The, uh, yeah, the, that right? That's one reason I, I just enjoyed the Illinois Bureau of Race, Racetrack Police so much is that we were judge, jury, and executioner, oh, hmm. all in That's one. That's convenient. Yeah. All in one. Yeah. It was private property. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you screw up uh, whatever happens. Uh, if if the police didn't take you in, we t- turned them over to the police. Then we took them up to see the real bosses, the stewards, and they ran the Illinois Bu- uh, the uh, Illinois Racing Board stewards. And uh, they had they could take your license away from you for life. Oh, and, they were, and that they would were also go. 
around the country because they were all involved, and that would be told to everybody, and you couldn't work at any racetrack. Hmm. So uh, it, it was, uh, yeah, that was fun. That was fun there. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> we tried our best to have some fun on the job. But, you know. Absolutely. But well, 80% of your calls aren't even related to crime. They're yeah. service calls or, you know, my son would eat yeah. his cornflakes or yeah. stuff like that. You think I'm kidding? No, I believe no, I know. <laughs> I was involved oh, yeah. with the police. My son would eat his cornflakes. Uh, they called the fire department. I was brand new on the job. They called the fire department because the, the uh, pipes were frozen. Yep. And, and yeah. Stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that coldest day, that's, it's, that's some guy was throwing out pipes and it burned out a block. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I remember that coldest day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was listening to the, I guess it was Englewood or Maine, and I don't oh, know who was, who was dispatcher. Torch. He says, we'll send you what we got, but the, gov- the cover's getting pretty bare. <laughs> <laughs> this was, uh, I come home from work on midnights one time, my wife goes, you don't listen to your radio very well, do you? That's what he mean. <laughs> Well, I was working in the second district time at the time we were living in that in Chicago Law, eighth district. He says, uh, "Yeah, two thirty in the morning, somebody's going around, some drunks going around knocking on all the doors." I said, "Well, we get the calls for two and twenty-one on our band, not this." So people think they get them all, but uh, you don't. But uh, where were we now? Where were we? We're talking about uh, law enforcement officers. Re- realistic. Philosophers. Realism. Realism. I, I got to give, uh, and, and no matter what anybody thinks of them, uh, I know that, that a lot of people, you know, criticized them. Of course, he was the boss, Phil Klein, yeah. about what he has done for the Chicago Police Memorial oh, yeah, yeah, Foundation mm-hmm. and, and yeah. the, the uh, uh, services down at uh, Navy, uh, not Navy Pier, Soldier Field. Yeah, at the uh, uh, at the memorial park. And, yeah, and he made that down there, and and he's he's done all of that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, good for Phil. He, you know, he was about the most approachable guy I remember. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You just stop. Actually, go out of his way to talk to you. Did Did your career in the police department intersect with Orlando Wilson? Was Was he? I have a career. Well, <laughs> the first time you mentioned it that way. Actually, I took the test and. Uh, over the summer, before I got sworn in, he resigned. So oh. I don't know if you didn't want to avoid me or, or it was just <laughs> accidental like Did that. Did you get a feel from the officers of what they thought of Wilson? Because he had, he had not been a career police officer. But, I mean, most people looked upon him as, as kind of the next closest thing to J. Edgar Hoover. That was the it impression. Was, it was the sort of same that thing. Because, you know, let's him. face it. Uh, but didn't he come in from Kansas or California? Oh, I think California. California. Yeah, California. Yeah, he was, was he was originally in Kansas or something, though. You're right. Yeah, yeah there's a Kansas the, connection. They had the blue and white squad cars, and he, he painted them the same. The color. Mars lights. Yeah. Right. I mean, his. I was a kid at the time, but the image of Orlando Wilson was that he was like J. Edgar Hoover. Huh. He was Mr. Incorrupt- the Summerdale Incorruptible yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. law enforcement. He was going to settle everything. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I had old timers tell me he, he he was it was great things he did do. He he uh, upped your salary. Mm. Uh, they did get equipment that they never had before. They got a new uh, train uh, communication center. Communications I guess, center I guess was very much behind the times. Uh, you want to see an example of the old one? Everyone would see that movie called North Side Seven Seven Seven. Oh sure, Jimmy oh, yeah. Stewart. It shows the old uh, the oh, old yeah. um, New City Police Station was at Forty Seventh and Polina. It was just. <laughs> Just the whole building. It was, yeah. it was so narrow. Only one person could walk up and down the stairway at a time to the well, second floor. And before that, it was at Eleventh and State up on the what fourth floor or somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, For a long yeah, time there. Yeah. But before his time, wasn't the didn't the police uh, come out of City Hall? The main uh, Ooh. before O.W. Wilson's time. Was that right? No, fire or, department did. Did they? Yeah. 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 Okay, we were they, in room one hundred and five. One but uh, I, I remember my my son, the yeah. guy we're talking about, uh, was going to go on Chicago, mm-hmm. and they, uh, the state police, had to go down there because they were going to take over patrolling the the uh, expressways. expressways. And they did, and uh, they they ordered Johnny and and everybody to go down and uh, to Eleventh and State and look at their communication system. Mm -hmm. And while he was down there with another guy, they were calling me, where is your son, where is your son? And uh, some, I don't remember who it was, some dick called me and he said, "Uh, we're looking for your son. Uh, He's supposed to be down here on the 
floor above or below where Johnny was, and he was he'd have been a Chicago copper. Hmm. He was supposed to go down there and take his P test or whatever right. they you know they were doing. So uh, and I asked him. I said, "Hey, where were you?" They're Chicago's looking for. He said, "We were down there, hmm. yeah, looking at their communications." So, so that's when I I knew that they they had communications at Eleventh. Yeah, Street. that was there for a long time. Yeah. I don't know what it was before. Yeah. One thing I read about Wilson was that all during the fifties, the administration had really shortchanged the police and probably the fire as well. They they were trying to keep costs down, and right. they didn't spend as any more money than they had to. But no. mm -hmm. with the Summerdale scandal, right. and then when Wilson came in. He could, whatever he wanted, right. they had to give it to him. They yeah. didn't dare yeah. cross yeah. Wilson because the press, everybody was behind right. him. And Daly they, was they, fully behind him. Oh, yeah, and they, no, they no. spent money, particularly those first few years, it would have been undreamed of right. in, yep. in the 50s in terms of equipment for the well, for well, police. And our equipment and the fire department, and, and this is not exaggerating, we would tie it together with uh, uh, wire hangers. Bailing wire. And we, oh, yes, yeah. bailing wire. We'd paint it. We'd all, because Quinn used all that money to go right back into Daly's pocket right. oh, at boy. City Hall. I remember when they had the old black and white squad cars? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were six cylinders with stick shift. With the gumball on top. Right. And they didn't put any sirens on. You hear them going down the street honking their horn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did Wilson leave on his own volition or was he eased out? I, I, you know. Supposedly his own volition. Yeah, he was, I hope he so. Was, he, yeah. I mean, he had been a, a chief for a long time. He well, he was young. there like from 59 or 60 to 67. Yeah. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think Seven or eight years. When you think yeah. of how, I mean, it's really been kind of a revolving door ever since Wilson. Superintendent just yeah. come and go yeah. ever yeah. since Wilson. Yeah. Well, to me, and there's obviously some notable exceptions more or less, but being the superintendent of police is like being... Charlie McCarthy to Edgar Bergen because I mean, you, how much can you say on your own right. without okay. well, you know disagree with the, right. in this case, tiny dancer? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah. that's why. Was it in Texas recently? They had a state law about uh, sanctuary cities just got signed into law. Yeah. And how many sheriffs or chiefs of police were against it? Well, are they personally against it, or, or was it the was their administration? administration? Against it. Yeah, sure, of course. That's what it is. Just like with you ask ask most of these chiefs of police about. Uh, should you be arming yourself? And say, well, no, we shouldn't be arming you. Leave it to the police. But personally, what's their real opinion about that? I mean, right. you should be able to protect yourself, right? Yeah. Do we do we keep do you keep lifesavers in, just in the hands of lifeguards? Or <laughs> yeah. right? How yeah. long was the park district police in effect? Well, there were originally yeah. how many different park districts? There were like four different park districts at one time. Well, I remember they merged they them in 1934. Because they connected the, 50s the parks. Had the boulevards. It was the 50, about the 50s. My brother-in-law was a right. park district copper. Because yeah, I remember them. Yeah. They always wear white ties and bow yeah. ties. Yeah. White yeah. bow ties. January 1st, 59. They were the, the end of it. Was it? Okay. Yeah. And then they hired Chicago cop or off-duty Chicago cop. No, no. They they merged them. Over. Now this happened before Wilson came on. Yeah, and Wilson, yeah. Not, nothing you yeah. do with the consolidation. There was uh, I found this and I was looking through something, doing some research into the newsletter. It was the Exchange of Services Act of 1957? Mm -hmm. The way it was worded, it were park districts and municipalities of over 500,000, of which at the time there was only one, will transfer their those employed as police officers to the city or something like like right. that. And they, they gave the date. I know they heard, they said, guys, right to the end, Sam, this will never happen. Well, Because I remember as a kid, I could tell the park district cops because their squad cars had white tops on them and they had a star mm. on the side. Ah. Yeah. And then, I don't know, it was 56 or something like that, Chicago went to white tops on the squad cars? Uh, I don't know. I was, I'm, I'm younger than you are, I think. How old are you? 72. 70. <laughs> so, <laughs> I used to run from them a lot. <laughs> but I remember, but that, that's another thing. Did the CTA have its own police? Sure force? it is. They yeah. did, yeah, CTA. Yeah. I had a guy in our class had been a CTA detective, they call him or something. Matter of fact, one of them is a cop in, in Cicero. Hmm. He That's used to be. He was formerly a Chicago CTA policeman. Right. No, they were real police. They were, remember when it was during Burns' time? Hmm. She, either can't, she either ended it? I think they ended during Burns. Yeah, I think I so. I remember that. Yeah, anyway, no. on, on the. Um, the news had said that Mayor Byrne ended some security guards, and it wasn't. They were actually police <laughs> officers. They were. Officers. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were. And, and Jody Weiss was never really accepted by the rank and file. He was looked upon as an outsider, and I think that was always an issue. Some Someone said to me, outside. but he's from the FBI. I said, ooh, really? Okay. Wow. Right. That's, that's yeah. really something. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> he's from the FBI. <laughs> but I mean, uh, you know, as the old saying goes, you know, familiarity breeds contempt. I mean, we know in our own organization, someone, someone like Tom McKenna, he came on the job. Tom, for a long time, worked with St. Rita Band. So did Dennis, they, you know, like helping with it. And because uh, they had been with band members. And uh, anyway, some parent there said, do you know Lieutenant so-and-so was in the academy? <laughs> Tom says, yeah, he's a real A-blank, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy says, oh, yeah, I go fishing with him. <laughs> wow. But, I mean, obviously there's a different, big perception, d- d- difference. Well, this guy probably was. <laughs> but uh, come on, let's go. More questions. Everybody's got that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. It's just like someone will say, oh, he was a good guy, wasn't he? Go, when you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then when, what's, the, what's the old saying goes? When they go, oh, yeah, I know who he is, they, they're they actually, what are they thinking, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like someone you ask you a question, you say, well, that's an interesting question. That's a way of avoiding yeah. saying it what you really an think. Interesting answer. That's a very yeah. interesting yeah. question. Well, Nixon used to say that for a little time. Well, that's, a that's a good question. I'm glad you asked it. Yeah. Well, that's of course the the trick. If you know you when you get a question, well, that's a, I'm glad you asked that question. And then yeah. you answer a completely different question. You, <laughs> yeah. say, you talk about what you want to talk it, it about. Gives you a little time too. That's a politician. Yeah. Yeah. But but my answer to that always is, you know, the reporter gets to ask the questions, and the the the, the official gets to answer the questions, mm-hmm. and you can't tell him what to ask, and he can't tell you what what your answer is supposed yeah. to be. But you're being judged. You see, though. you see these guys like George Stephanopoulos. Well, you're not answering the question. Well, maybe I don't want to talk about yeah. your question, George. Maybe I think. Your question is stupid, George. No, George, not George. No. Yeah, they talk of some guys. Yeah, let's who, pick on George stuff. Who, <laughs> who ran and he got elected as a not a senator, a House of Representative. Well, I was in Vietnam two years. He says, "So what? How does that help you be a legislator?" Yeah. You know, yeah. that's direct. Yeah. Well, I mean, our, our new I'm senator, sure that is too. Uh. Our, our new senator, God bless, she lost her leg and all that, and God bless her for it. But and she's well. I'm well, I, I think what it gets you is. A little publicity and a little... Uh, right. You get that vote. Right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, looking at the way sometimes the media portrays police, one movie that always stands out in my mind, 1985's Code of Silence, starring the great Chuck Norris. He's like a, a lone wolf policeman undercover, and you get the impression that all of Chicago is on the take, the politicians, the other policemen, and he's standing up against these... Uh, I never saw that. S- Puerto Rican gangs, uh, yeah. Hispanic gangs. And you see a lot of the city in this movie, too. Mm-hmm. El Chase over the Chicago River. Oh, yeah. A lot of scenes around Uptown and the uh, L Station. That uh, movie always stands out in my mind. It really that's shows that's the gritty aspect of Chicago. Mm. Mm. I don't know that. Never heard I of like that, Chuck yeah. Norris, but I never, yeah. I've Code never seen Silence. that film. Yeah, that's yeah. A, a lot of stunts in that, yeah. Mm-hmm. can't think of anybody else of note who was in that. I think Dennis Farina had a bit part. Yeah. That's goes without saying. Yeah. Hmm. I'll have to put that down on things to see. Yeah, six, eight, eight, five, five, uh, It's a well-known film, but I've never seen that picture. Yeah. yeah. But you talk about interference. I know you, Bill. You got that in your department too. It was like uh, uh, everybody, uh, everybody who does it. Oh, here, that's another point I wanted to make. I don't know why we even need a budget like we do for the police department. I mean. Why do we need a training division? When you come on the scene, most everybody knows your job to tell you anyway what, what we're supposed to do. So we're wasting all that money for that. Mm. It's you know, probably most it, of your your uh, uh, expertise from the guy that you're with, your partner. Or yeah. Well, at this day and well, age, there's yeah. a liability yeah. involved. Yeah. If they find out you're not trained, yeah. I mean, a lawyer will go yeah. up and down you. They well, try. back before World War II and even for some time after World War II, I don't think there was much in the way of training for police officers. It was on the job. On the you, job. You right. rode along with a veteran mm-hmm. officer, and that's how you learned. Oh, JT. Yeah. yeah that's, well, that's the best. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to give you all this theory and background. It helps. But then once you get to see real practicality of something, like I, I like another thing was they always wanted more and more education. Well, when I came on, you still weren't required to have high school. They wanted it. I don't think yeah. anybody did. But uh, uh, I saw, and a lot of these officers, I worked in uh, the old 2nd District, 48th and Wabash, and it was mostly black. It had been virtually all black at one time. And I saw guys there. They were like, as far as psychology of handling a situation, 
brilliant at handling people and getting motivated. Oh, this okay. wasn't from any education. Right. This was from common sense and it's, street smarts. You, let me just, this is one of my pet peeves, and that's about education. I just heard a fellow on, on, on television you know, talking. He was doing a, a presentation about, about uh, the First World War, but he was talking about he saw the, the test that was administered in, in a major school system, an eighth grade graduation exam that apparently they had in the school district, right. like a proficiency test for the eighth grade. And he said he looked at it and he was amazed. He said there are college graduates today who could not could, pass I this saw test. That. Yeah. Because that's how rigorous education was in those in days those in days. terms of right. eighth right. grade right. education mm -hmm. would be the equivalent today of, you know, right. maybe a high school, maybe beyond a high school education. But, right. I mean, mm -hmm. the, this, the education in our country has declined to such an extent that I it doesn't mean anything. Not, not that I was such a great student, but... Uh, one of my grandkids, uh, I don't know, he was talking about what he was taking and and uh, uh, that he wasn't doing good in this and that and the other thing. And and I said, uh, oh, I said, uh, how do you like uh, uh, math and and uh, science? And that? oh, that's great. I said, well, give me a couple of uh, pages or even a couple of sentences on the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> And he looked at me Duh. and he said, <laughs> <What's that>? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? He had no idea. <laughs> that was pounded into my head by the Christian brothers. Oh, yeah. Right. And there's Eureka. too many re remedial okay. college courses. That's where all those bumps came from. from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Hey. Oh, boy. Well, but, we just saw good examples of, uh, uh, once again, Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Oh, uh, God. She was talking about <laughs> the Russia was go, going into uh, Korea. It was Crimea, but Korea. I mean, yeah. people... Uh, and it's, but, see, if you're on that side of the fence, you can say these boneheaded things, and the media never seems no, to notice no. it. No. They ne and neither do the late-night comics. They don't, no. they don't rip you for it for, for six months the way Letterman used to do every time. If Bush would just the slightest slip of the tongue, let Dan him be doing jokes about it for mm. the next three yeah. years. Yeah. Dan Quayle with his supposed oh, Quayle, uh, Sarah Palin. Yeah, I can see. She never said. She never that. said. Tina Fey. Tina Fey did. did it, and so they mm -hmm. hung it. Or they hung it around That's Sarah cool. Palin. Right. Yeah. But, but you can but make anybody these watch uh, Saturday Night Live Saturday. Who was on there? That that uh, uh, Melissa oh, McCarthy make, oh. making fun of of Spice. Yeah. Can Spicer. you imagine them doing that to Josh Ernest? Oh, oh they do? my God! They have that the woman that impersonates Sean Spicer. Yeah, Spicer's. I know who she is. is they, you never saw that for the eight years Obama was president. I don't remember them no. mocking his press secretary, mm, no. portraying his press secretary as a buffoon. Mm -hmm. But I never remember him having press briefings either. Sure, they had press briefings. Obama oh, did. Oh, yeah. Of what? Yeah. Once a month? Yeah. Every day they had. Yeah. Them. But but yeah. but the, the press was there. They were all among friends. They were you know they were all fellow yeah. Democrats. Well, they didn't have any any problem with well, anything he where said. Where was it? I mean, I didn't see it on any channels. Well, they didn't they didn't telecast it because apparently they thought it wasn't newsworthy. They have a they have a daily press briefing at the White House. Yeah, I know they you did. Know. So they, the Democrats they, they did it under the Obama administration. Just that. But I'm not. Yeah, I guess I am. But yeah. Trump says they love it because their ratings in the s in, during yeah, actually, the daytime are going way to heck. Oh, yeah. Up. yeah. Especially if he's on the president's on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. There was somebody he's saying, well, <laughs> get rid of him and once a week have a briefing on what you did all week. You know, yeah. during the <laughs> Ooh. You yeah. can go How directly. About that? How about that? Yeah. With, uh, Even the dog doesn't like that. With, with <laughs> social media, you can... You don't need those people anymore. Well, during the campaign, you know, there were complaints that the media was giving too much airtime to Trump during the primary yeah, campaign. It, right. it was ratings. Ratings, right. Every right. time Trump was on, the ratings were through the roof. Well, that's why they're covering <laughs> the, the press uh, meetings. Well, they still Every, can't figure out why he won, but... <coughs> sure he can. How do you like Alec sure, Baldwin's the Russians. impression of Trump? Uh, Who's? Alec Baldwin impression of Trump. I never, oh, oh. I never, I never watched Saturday Night Live. Oh, okay. It looks like a good impression, but I don't, I don't watch either, moment. so... But during the last, I don't know how many years, how much of people Bye. are depending on government to do stuff they used to do a long time ago? I, I listened well, to the Oak Park Scanner. Yeah. And we get people calling up saying, there's a, there's a car that's all scratched up in front of my house. I want it moved because it's lowering my property, property values. values. <laughs> yeah. There's a proper way to do that, but it, it doesn't require an instant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
It sure doesn't require any instant service. Hmm. I'm sure they have an abandoned auto, you know, somebody yeah, working on the that. The cars that have been sitting there six months, they won't even touch. Well, Why? I don't know. They shouldn't be sitting there six months. I wouldn't take care. Call sooner. Who's sooner? Have a great Memorial Day. Somebody from Oklahoma. Okay. Sooner. Yeah, but no, I'm saying uh, uh, even a poor system can be made better by using the phone. And right. Since we were on the air the last time, that eminent late night comic Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, Corey Bale? and also Bill Maher. Yeah. Uh, both went on vulgar. <coughs> tirades yeah. against against Donald Trump and mm -hmm. his family. And if anyone had done anything, you know, one fourth that objectionable about Barack Obama, they would have been off the they would have probably yanked him right. in the middle of the broadcast. Right. They would have come yeah. out and come out the some hook. executive would come out and live with the hook and we'll would go have on the music or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, you know, it's just fine. Yeah. It's just it's interesting. They put it on the, the morning show the following day and, and ran ran it several times so yeah. make sure everybody got to see what mm -hmm. the, I, what I, the think, was I think this coverage from the lame street media <laughs> good. I think it's gonna backfire. That's what Sarah Palin calls it. The lame you know, the lame stream right, media. But no one pays attention. But yeah, that's what's the gonna happen? People are paying attention Some to do. them because they're all trying Get in his way as much as possible. I'm watching much less of network news. For years, I always watched the CBS. From that time I was a, a kid, I always watched the CBS Evening News. I thought, mm -hmm. and I'm watching less and CBS, less. CBS, that's a Clinton broadcast. Well, 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 well it, Douglas Edwards. Doug, I can remember as a little kid mm -hmm. watching Douglas Edwards with mm -hmm. the news. Right. Fifty at fifteen minutes of news. It was and then who? Low, 50, and then Cronkite Walter took Cronkite took over. Oh, but Cronkite, I, yeah. I remember yeah. watching Walter Cronkite on the. Well, Cronkite was a liberal, but at least yeah. you had a sense that he was a journalist and he right. was at least. Mm -hmm. Making some effort to be even-handed, but now they they don't make any pretense about in being objective. The, where they elect, you know, the what do they call where they elect a presidential nominee? Convention. Convention. He was wearing a Kennedy button. Well, I what's wrong? When was that? Sixty. Or was he? I yeah. wouldn't be. You know. Not, I, I'm sure he didn't do it on the air, but I'm sure people, you know, like I say, I'm sure Cronkite was a liberal Democrat, wow. but but there was a, they, they at least had some ethics. There was some ethics of professional journalism at yeah. that time, right. and now it's just like they've just thrown all that to the wind. There so was a separation they're, they're, they're between. Just, they're just like the opposition now. It's right. like it's like they, they should all. I say they should all call them the DBS, the Democratic Broadcasting mm -hmm. System, because that's every night you turn it on, and it's just. Here's what Trump did today, and isn't this outrageous, folks? And then they give well, their, their their rebuttal to what... Who, when did they ever rebut what Barack Obama said? I don't remember yes. Scott Pelley having a wise crack it's at the end. It's interesting what you just said. And the way I was thinking about uh, when you make an accusation, you're supposed to present some something to support, some facts, some yeah. evidence. Yeah. But now all you need is the accusation and a lot of indignation. Yeah, sure. And it's like yeah. you're convicted. And another thing, I mean, they have... I just saw now with now with this this the firing they're they're bringing this parade of Democratic senators on. They had Warner from from, and well we are going to look into this and we right. are going as if as if they're the, you know these impartial judges. They're presenting them like like Trump is accountable to him and you know right. he's going to have to answer to me or we're going to get to the bottom. When did Obama ever have to face that? You know it's it's just no. it's they've gone 180 degrees in the opposite direction from the way they covered. The news for eight years under the previous administration. And another thing is, or the lack of the new covering the news. Yeah, well, we're supposed went to be wrong. They just didn't say anything about. They it. were part of the team. They, we're supposed they to are. be adversarial. I'm the, I'm the loyal op the loyal opposition. Well, they're adversarial when they when they no. have a Republican in the White House. No, I mean, that's all they they're, are. They're part of the team when when their guys in the White that's House. Right. Even back in the day, Ronald Reagan was president. Tip O'Neill was the the. Mm. Uh, Speaker of the House, they might argue back and forth all weekend long. At the end, they went down to Pat Troy's over <laughs> there in Arlington and yeah. bent the elbow for a couple hours. Yeah. That's right. Well, you yeah, know. there was, there was. You, that's those days are gone. Yeah. I mean, there's real, there is real hostility well, now between between. Well, bring back the days of point counterpoint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> John Shana, Kennedy, you're an idiot. Shana, uh, you're an idiot. That's right. <laughs> John you Kennedy and, and Barry Goldwater were close socially. Kennedy, yeah. yeah. But see, I would argue there wasn't that 
big of a gulf between a no. John F. Kennedy and a Barry Gold. They were both World War II vets. They were right. both patriots. They both wanted a strong America. Yeah. They, they saw I. You just said it. They're both patriots. Yeah. They could share a it's, beer together. That's not the case together. today. No. I mean, no. there is a no. real gulf between no. between the oh. two parties. And there's a gulf. They don't want to get along. They want to destroy the opposition. We have one more intermission about to begin, and you've been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians. Thank you. Friends, are you looking for a place to have some printing done? Well, I have the right place for you to go, and that is the printing store in Oak Park, Illinois. Call or see Phil Berry at 621 Madison Street in Oak Park, Illinois, or call 708-383-3638. Phil will sit down with you and help you plan whatever you need printed. Now his products are brochures, booklets, business cards, catalogs, envelopes, letterheads, flyers, invitations, newsletters, notepads, menus, mailers, manuals, labels, posters, postcards, price lists, NCR forms, cell sheets, table tents, pocket folders, and presentation forms. And his services include one to four color offset printing, digital copying, high speed copying, graphic designs, typesetting, laminating, foil stamping, die cutting, and imprinting. And he also has a complete binary service which includes booklets, cutting, scoring, folding, numbering, padding, and drilling. So once again, for all your printing needs, See or call Phil Berry at the printing store at 621 Madison Street in Oak Park, Illinois, or call 708-383-3638. And once again, they are located at Madison Street and Clarence Avenue, just east of Oak Park Avenue. And it's at 621 Madison Street in Oak Park, or call 708-383-3638. And ask to speak to. Now back to our discussion. And this is John Kachoko. We're here with Meet the Chicago Historians. And a couple of historical notes before we, we conclude our program. Uh, we've mentioned uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy a number of times on this sh program, and that's appropriate because this month we mark his centennial. John F. Kennedy was born in May of 1917. So just think of it. If he were still alive today, he would be 100 years old. We, That's amazing. We yeah. think of Kennedy as such a young man because he died so young. He was in his 40s, so he's eternally young. But he, of course, was a World War II veteran, and we know that World War II veterans are all well advanced in years now. So this, this month, we mark the 100th birthday of of a great man, a great patriot, a great war hero, and a man who certainly, I think, had the potential to be a great president. He didn't serve long enough, I think, that you could truly say that, but a good president. And uh, he was born 100 years ago this month, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Mm -hmm. We're also marking, this this uh, year was the 100th anniversary of the Russian Revolution. Mm. Uh, the toppling of the Tsar. Uh, early in 1917, and then the the Bol what's called, was called the Bolshevik Revolution, the Communist Revolution, later in the year, Vladimir Putin has said that the fall of the Soviet Union was one of the great tragedies of the 20th century, and I say he he's just slightly wrong. It was the creation of the Soviet <laughs> Union that was the one of the great tragedies of the 20th century. But it was a hundred years ago that that Tsar Nicholas was toppled, and you see a. a, a just want to take an opportunity to say a good word about the Tsar, because historians of World War II often talk about the great contribution that the Red Army made in, in World War II, and the great losses that they suffered prove how valiantly they fought. Russians in the First World War suffered tremendous casualties, mm -hmm. 
And the Tsar was a very loyal ally of the British and French. He, he sent his armies off on offensives, 1914, 1915, 1916, that they could ill afford, that they were not prepared for, simply because the British and French were pleading for him to take the pressure off the, 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 off the Western Front where they were mm-hmm. confronting the Germans. And the Tsar always, lo- as a loyal ally, uh, contributed to their cause. So uh, it's funny that when you talk about the losses that the Russians suffered in World War I, that's used as an example for how incompetent the Tsar was. When you talk about their losses in World War II under, the, under Stalin, that shows the great heroism of mm-hmm. the Red Army. At least that's what mm-hmm. the left... That's the spin. What, what left... Yep. Leaning historians will tell you, and uh, so mm-hmm. I just want to take this opportunity to say a good word about Tsar Nicholas II. Right. Uh, well, he was Nicholas never broke. Alexander. He was always headed Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, good man, a very decent mm-hmm. good man. Another thing is, is someone brought out a. I was at a political thing a long time a, a club I belonged to and all, and a man from Russia came up and said, "The only difference now is in the Tsar's day they obeyed the international agreements." And today they don't uh, under uh, the current uh, regime. Then the, uh, the I, I thought I, I, to me it was a surprise. I thought that we'd never see the end of the Soviet system in our lifetime. Did you, John? I did. I, the speed I, of the fall. Of it. I yeah. did. I, I, and I, and I, I, I take some claim to. I, I used to call myself the Nostradamus of of, <laughs> of, the, of the then twentieth yeah. century. I always believed that system was so corrupt and so rotten from the inside. Right. We had so exaggerated it. You know, you talked about them being the other superpower. They mm. never really were, other than in nuclear weapons. But in everything else, they were so far behind the United States that it was pathetic. Okay. And they were never our equals in anything. Other. They, had, they had poured everything they could into their military, just the way North Korea is doing right. now, to build missiles and, and hydrogen bombs. But the system was so rotten. All it took, all it took, was was a good push, and the whole thing. You mm-hmm. saw how quickly it just collapsed overnight. This was called the strategic strategic defense initiative yeah. in the yeah. poker game with Ronald Reagan. And we owe it. We owe it to that great yeah. that great trio of Ronald Reagan, mm-hmm. Pope John Paul II, and the Iron Lady Margaret mm-hmm. Thatcher. We were just. I mean, you talk about. If there's proof that there is a God, yeah. I think it's the fact mm-hmm. that that we had these three great leaders simultaneously when we needed them. To just bring mm-hmm. that whole system Great crumbling trial. down. Well, we could, we're going to add uh, 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 Lech Walesa to that in the polls. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. There were, you know, sure, there were others. Helmut, Helmut, Helmut Kohl in Kohl, Germany. Yeah. But they were, the, I mean, the United States, Britain, and the Pope were the... the yeah. The, the, the um, how many divisions did the Pope have? Did <laughs> Stalin ask that one time? And Churchill, Churchill said, uh, he has divisions that are not on parade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, we also had, uh, and, and this is the New York Times Bureau for years, a guy named Walter Duranty oh, there, yes. who was giving all, there the, all kinds of false reports about how successful the Soviets' programs were, and they completely glossed over the uh, the uh, uh, genocide uh, per- perpetrated on Ukraine. The yep. millions, and you know, you know, we, we rightly know yes. about the millions that Hitler put to death, mm-hmm. but there is has not been anywhere near the attention. The right. tens of millions yeah. that died under Joseph Stalin. Right. The Chinese with the Japanese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I was just reading that during during the invasion of Russia, they, they would they would empty the labor camps and they would send these men advancing into German minefields to clear the mine and they would have they would have the NKVD, the secret police behind yeah. them mm-hmm. so right. that they couldn't they couldn't retreat. Right. And they would send these guys just marching into minefields to, to explode the, minefield. the mine so mm-hmm. that then the tanks could come through yeah. unmolested. I mean that's the, the level of Stalin's evil. Yeah, and about the uh, Katyn Forest mass- massacre. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was they blamed it for years on the Nazis and it was uh, Joe Stalin's Stalin, boys. Stalin. All these thousands of officers in the Polish army were in World War One, Killed. Japan started on our side. Well, oh. Japan was on; they were allied they with were. Britain all through the right. all through yeah. the First right. World War, and us a little later. But when when they had, the they picked up a lot of German islands. That was that's the what event. it was. They, 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 they did. They made yeah, almost they no contribution to the war effort, but they Korea picked up those too. German colonies. Yeah, well, they got Korea. Bef- they took Korea in 1910. They took right. Korea a little bit before Chosen. the First World War. Right. Yeah. United Korea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But they. When they had, uh, you know, split up the booty or whatever you want to call it, they kind of ignored Japan, and I think that's probably why. Well, they already, they, you know, they they mm. grabbed German islands. You know, after after the First World War, Britain had been allied with Japan, right? 
And the British, they actually, there was, there was actually, they had to consider the fact that they're allied with Japan, and Japan is clearly becoming an adversary of the United States. So they had to decide, who do they want to be aligned with, Japan mm-hmm. or the United States? And that was a very easy question for right. the British government. They, they didn't have to spend a great deal of time considering that. So their links with Japan went by the wayside. But I, I kind of think Pearl Harbor had its beginnings about them because they were pissed off at the Allies because... Mm-hmm. They treated them like dirt. Well, I think I might have made the point last month that Teddy Roosevelt foresaw a showdown oh, between us and the Japanese oh, yeah. right. at some point in the yeah. Pacific. Right. Yeah, yeah, he I mean, saw Japan as a coming power when he tried to make, right. when he made peace with them and the Russians. What did they call the one plan, the Greater East Asian Co- Co-Prosperity East Sphere? Co-Prosperity Sphere. Right. Prosperity Which sphere. means, uh, it was let's essentially take it like all. The new order in, in Europe yeah. it was Hitler's new order. Mm-hmm. The Japanese thought that they were a master race in the same way that the Nazis did. They had that same master race mm-hmm. concept that the Germans had in World War II. But they treated yeah. Koreans, the Chinese, the Filipinos, Filipinos. They, were all, they were all subordinate people as far right. as the Japanese were Hitler concerned. Hitler, or some of his people are, have said to call the Japanese the Aryans of Asia. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah. They had a lot more history than the Nazis did, though. The well, Nazis didn't come around until what? 33 or 34? No, 32, 33. They came to power in 33. They were around the 20s, I think. Well, they were they moving to the power. But the, the military took yeah. control of the Japanese government in the 20s. I mean, prior to that, Japan Japan in the in the teens and 20s, the early 20s, was not the Japan that we think of with Tojo. And they were just another another country with an empire. It was right, the, the army. The army increasingly took over from the mid-20s uh, on. Tojo's plane got shot down by American ones, didn't they? That was Yamamoto. Yeah, yeah to- Yamamoto. Admiral Yamamoto. Admiral Yamamoto. Okay. Yeah, uh, Yushi Are, crush of 28, wasn't it? I'm sorry. Yushi Are, crush of 30, 28 or something well, like that? He initiated yeah. Pearl Harbor then. Yeah, he was, the, he was the, but he didn't want war with the United States. He, he planned the attack on Pearl Harbor. He was very, he knew that going to war with the United States was a, was, would be a disaster for Japan. Awakening he, a yeah. slumbering giant. Yeah. 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 And filled him with a terrible resolve. Mm. Their famous story, he was, he, would, like, he was at a cabinet meeting once, with, and he hated Tojo. He, ha- he hated the, the, the military, the army, that wing of the army that wanted war with America. Tojo was standing up and was ranting against America and demanding war. And when Tojo sat down, he fell right to the floor because Yamamoto had pulled his chair out from under him <laughs> while he was talking. Well, <laughs> he made a fool of him, and he was, everybody laughed at him. <laughs> well, <laughs> the emperor, they said the Japanese had a... Unconditional surrender. It wasn't because they left the emperor. That was in one condition. Yeah, so it wasn't unconditional. No. MacArthur's it, it, Yeah, we understood that the Japanese would have fought to the last rock in the mm-hmm. center of if if they, if not given the assurance that the emperor would be allowed at least temporarily right. to remain on right. his throne. Mm-hmm. But the two atom bombs many, helped along there too. Well, of course, but but they would have still fought. The point is, they would have still fought. I mean, they still had an army in Japan. They still had. They still had a big, well-equipped army in the Japanese home island with plenty of rifles and machine guns and bullets and hand grenades, and they were teaching kids to throw Molotov right. cocktails. They were teaching women to use sharpened stakes. Mm-hmm. Right. They would, I mean, you look at the way they fought in Okinawa and Iwo Jima. Yeah. They would have fought for their home islands to There's the that last one. But ditch. after the war, when they had the American occupation, they got along. Yeah. Well, them. they're very adaptable. Yeah, we know that. They quickly they saw even, that the American... They took to parliamentary democracy pretty well. Right, yeah. the but army they didn't even carry sidearms. Sidearms, they were saying after that. The army had told the people that the Americans were going to be like locusts; that they were going to loot and rape. Right, but right. when they saw that none of that happened, right. they you know, realized that this was all nonsense; that right. this was not true. That makes me think of the film. I think it was in Okinawa. The woman would not surrender to the Americans. She jumped into a big ravine. Mm. Holding your child yeah. rather than, you know. Yeah, well, because they, they'd been told that we were like been. barbarians. What was the last island that they took? Okinawa. And they were jumping off cliffs. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, remember Wally, uh, not Wally, remember when uh, Edward Jolik had his talk show for a while? Sure. We were talking about the very subject on there and about how uh, uh, the Japanese were had the resolve to fight to the last, the very sure. last. And that there were so many people who were still believing that they should be there, you know. So I called in and I said, and I added, uh, as you know, it's going to be something a little smart alecky, but and I said that people who really believed that the they should, the old ways, they, uh, they're the old, the old traditionalists, they, um, they thought that if you were disgraced, you were supposed to make up for it. And if you were disgraced very badly, you should give up your own life. Mm-hmm. 
So I said, what they would do is, if this had really happened and they followed through, they would go out and they would commit Jack Brickhouse. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I meant Harry Carey. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, jeez. <laughs> they would have got bombed on the <laughs> TV <laughs> show? Wow. But I mean, uh, it was like, they, they also, I also heard that if a Japanese soldier was captured and kept, he became a very good witness all of a sudden because he realized it wasn't true what he was being told. Sure, mm. sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they believe they truly believed that their emperor was a god, god. that yep. he was descended from gods. I mean, and so if you believe that your ruler is a god, yeah. you're, you know, there's no limit to what you're going to do to to protect him, to fight right. in his defense. But and what you're saying is, is, is yeah. he turned around and said, "Don't fight him." Yeah, and he, he I mean, they would not have surrendered if Hirohito had not ordered them to surrender. Right. And they, there was still a group in the military that tried to, they were going to try to take him captive destroy the recording that that recording that in which he announced the surrender they tried to, to take that recording and smash it so that it couldn't be played over the radio because he didn't he didn't speak live he recorded his speech right. and then they played it over the radio it telling the people to surrender weird things like uh tokyo rose originally came from chicago yeah i've she heard that she yeah. was on a tour or something or she was in Japan. Or I think there were several Tokyo Roses, yeah. we'll call yeah. them. She, the, right. the one in Chicago we just identified with it. Yum, right. Yummy Yuri. So they, yum, they held yum, her. Yum, yum, Belmont and Clark, she had a store right, right there. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, yeah. What, later? <laughs> yeah, I think she was there until maybe 10, 15 years she ago. Made, yeah. 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 She yeah. sold Japs potato chips, yeah. I imagine. She is. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Japs. <laughs> <laughs> it was two peas, wasn't it? It was J-A-P-P. I told my wife that. She thought I was kidding. Uh -huh. Mrs. Japs, so Japs potato chips. Oh, come on now. You always have to tell one of those things that sounds too uh, be true. And we all know that Cato, who had been a Japanese yeah. American, suddenly yeah, became, became Filipino, Filipino, I think, the day after <laughs> Pearl Harbor. And in the <laughs> serial, the movie serial adaptation, they said he was uh, Korean. Korean? So I wouldn't say Japanese there. <laughs> Japanese. Well, you know, those were the times. Um, on the radio, and he was a regular guest, I believe, of uh, Fred Allen, was. Uh, Bert Gordon, the mad Russian. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. During that period, they referred to him as our Russian friend. They wouldn't call him <laughs> mad Russian. <laughs> oh, sure. Of, uh, Uncle Joe, you know. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle, George, Uncle yeah. Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stalin wasn't even Russian. He's Georgian. He's Georgian, right. Georgian. He's, he's supposedly he's spoke he's very, very poor Russian. But, boy, his name wasn't Stalin either. Stalin meant man of steel. His name was Jugashvili. Yeah. Joseph Vissarionovich Jugashvili. Yeah. Well, not a leader. Didn't man. Hitler man have of steel? Some he was background? he was the original That's man of debated. steel. Like, the family might have changed the name from Schickelgruber at one time, but by the time Hitler was born, it was clearly Hitler's was Hitler's Hitler's, name. Hitler's grandfather's name was Schickelgruber. That's right. The but then the the, the paternity had been had been proven, and his father was named Hitler. It's, right. Right. Yeah. It's not true that his father was named Schickelgruber. It was no. his grandfather. No. That was. The illegitimate Stooges. Yeah, yeah Schickelgruber. Heil Schickelgruber. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people don't know that one either. Heil myself. Yeah, that one. Now, the evidence <laughs> of having Jewish ancestry, the town he was from in Austria, when the Anschluss took place and they annexed Austria, supposedly demolished he had the place evacuated and destroyed <laughs> with uh, Semit the, the yeah. tombstones. Ooh, yeah. I hadn't heard that. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the stories. I, I, still, I wonder, yeah. oh. But, uh, they didn't recognize his artistic aspiration. You know, the they, Nazis yeah. even had a formula for whether or not you could be called uh, non -Ari -Ari Aryan mm. still. If you had one non-practicing, uh, non-observant Jewish parent, uh, you could still be an Aryan yourself. A because parent. your other parent wasn't, and you weren't practicing. And they said, besides Jesus, this is this, Jesus... He had, the Holy Spirit was his father, so he wasn't, I mean, they, they went that far. The explanations like that. What's also fascinating is that they extolled this supposedly the Aryan Nordic Superman, you know, this tall, blonde, yep. blue-eyed. Athletic, muscular. Didn't, didn't anybody ever notice that Hitler and wasn't. Goebbels and yeah. Hitler, none of these guys <laughs> <laughs> met the characteristics. None of them looked like these no. blonde yeah. Aryan Nordic supermen. Yeah, especially Schickelgruber. <laughs> yeah. In per yeah, particularly yeah. Schickelgruber. That's why I think Hitler was an object of a lot of derision in this country. Mm -hmm. The stupid mustache and everything. Well, yeah, he was treated. He was. They made of him. I mean, they say that when the newsreels. I mean, I've, I've heard this when when newsreels in, in the states would show him in the 30s, people laughed. They thought he was a clown. They'd see him mm -hmm. making these ranting speeches and waving his mm -hmm. arms right. and everything. People would laugh. They thought he was and the Charlie Chaplin mustache. Exactly, yeah. 
And the but silly you, uniform, I mean, a politician wearing the silly uniform with armbands. And, but if like you listen to his speeches, though, <laughs> By the time you had the D- Triumph of the Will documentary produced, he w- I could see him as a magnetic and oh, yeah. speaker for he the Germans. He practiced all for that. For the Germans, yeah. I've yeah. seen pictures. He actually practiced. Yeah. There are pictures oh, the of gestures. him actually yeah. practicing these gestures and, and right. having pictures taken to see what would be the most effective but, gestures well, that he could use the from the podium. The way I think he came, because their economy, German economy, oh. was so oh, terrible. Destroyed. I mean... What's the best way to kick up economy? Start building war materials. That's exactly what he did. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. they talk about uh, Germany and uh, the Treaty of Versailles and World War I. Ger- I don't think Germany was any more to blame for that war than anyone else, personally. Do you? But they they were maybe had. On them, there were a number, a number of countries that, that shared the blame for the First World yeah. War. The Germans had their share of it, but so did I mean, so did Austria, so did France, mm-hmm. so did Russia. Everybody and Sir, I mean, if you want to, the Serbia more than anyone else. Little Serbia started the war by assassinating the Archduke. Right. They were the well, ones that touched the match to the to the trail of gunpowder. But there were like four hundred and fifteen ordinances in the Treaty of Versailles, and four hundred of them were against. the Oh Germans. yeah, I mean, this notion oh, that yeah. oh, they had to blame somebody. The Kaiser was not Hitler, and and the German Empire was not the Third Reich. Right. If you read that, right. if you know, are from our generation, you can't read Hitler backward no. into the First World War. The Kaiser was not. I mean, he was portrayed by Allied propaganda as a villain. As a, he was not. He was not. He was simply the, the image that they portrayed him in the movies as bloodthirsty murderer. That, that was yeah. not Kaiser Wilhelm. He was well, just like all the. The German troops weren't Nazis. No. Well, in World, sure, even right. in World, were, the great the majority Wehrmacht, of them they were. They were Wehrmacht, and they were armed to regular drafted. armed forces. Yeah. Right. The, the regular German, old German corps of officers did not like this messing over civilian populations either, as the no. Nazis were doing. No. You know, they didn't like and most of them despised Hitler. Right. Mm-hmm. But I also heard too when when they were going through Germany and they found SS. They were the fanatics. I mean, yeah, they, they were the, they were the, the true believers that didn't survive very much. The regular Wehrmacht, they were just Wehrmacht. regular troops. They were doing what they told. But yeah. the SS and uh, what's the other one? The SS and uh, the Gestapo. The Gestapo. The, yeah, yeah, he says when our troops yeah. r- come across them. Well, I don't know what they did, but they didn't survive very much. There is some evidence though, that when the Germans invaded Belgium to outflank the French defenses, they were particularly cruel toward the Belgian civilians, raising, knocking down a lot of, causing a lot of destruction. Right. But that was a, maybe a relatively small mark compared to the overall right. lack of in guilt the that they bore in World War I. Um, the, um, Tom McKenna and myself, both went to St. Rita High School and graduated, we had three or maybe even four priests who were from the Netherlands, who had been seminarians and were in concentration camps in World War II. Mm. Well, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't just Jews, and I mean, they no, had. Of course it wasn't. They had uh, gypsies. Gypsies. No, any, any, if you were a labor or an opposition or opposition party, you were right. There. That's right. A few weeks after the First World War began, I just, I've been reading, a, I read a fascinating book called "The World Remade." It's about about America in the First World War. Just a matter of a few weeks after the war broke out, British Navy found the, the uh, undersea lines that linked German news services with the United States, and they cut all the links from the continent to the U.S., so that the only news that came to the United States during the war had to go through either London or Paris. Mm-hmm. And that meant, that meant that the only news that our newspapers got that was news that had gone through the censors, had gone mm-hmm. through the, yeah. you know, the British and French like war that. offices. Right. So they were naturally, you know, they were they were presenting the war from their point of view, and the Germans were cut off. They couldn't communicate mm-hmm. directly. No news, nothing could come from the continent direct to the United States. So that, you know, to a large extent, and there was certainly a propaganda effort. I mean, everybody was was was, was also, waging propaganda at that Winston time. Winston Churchill was head of the Admiralty, was he not? Sure, he, right. That mm-hmm. was equivalent to the Secretary of the some, Navy. Uh, there's some right. uh, speech or there's some uh, policy he made. The gist of it was try to get these shipping lanes out where we can maybe we actually provoke a little bad publicity with the. There's the always the there's always been that suspicion. Mm-hmm, right. Yeah. There's always been the suspicion. I mean, they know that the Lusitania was carrying. 
weaponry was carrying right. munitions. Right. I mean, there's no, there's no, I mean, there's no doubt. There was a well, huge there a, a warning published in the paper. Yes, there I, was. I, 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 they I were doing that, then they ended it. it. There's, no. I see a picture of a New York newspaper which carries the news of of the sailing of the Lusitania. Right mm-hmm. below it, there's this this in black in a black border, yeah. this warning from the German embassy that there is a war zone that has been declared and you sail at your own risk. And we advise people not to sail on Allied ships. So, yeah, right. It almost didn't happen too. But with, yeah, with both uh, Roosevelt and Churchill were both Navy. Churchill well, yeah, Rose, Roosevelt was so. the assistant secretary so. of the Navy, and right. Churchill was the equivalent of the secretary of the Navy. Mm-hmm. Right. And Churchill's mother was American, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. Jenny Jerome. Yeah. What was her name? Jenny Jerome. Yeah. When he spoke before, Con- when he came to, to visit FDR right after Pearl Harbor, and he addressed Congress, and he said, you, you know, uh, if my father had been American and my mother British, instead of the other way around, I might have gotten here on my own. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's but right. I understand that he drove the staff at the White House crazy. Well, he had cra- his hours. His he hours, a, a yeah. night owl. Yeah. Slept and a heavy during drinker. the day and stayed yeah. up all yeah. night. And Kept Roosevelt up probably longer than he wanted to be. He yeah. yeah. was driving Eleanor nuts because she knew, <laughs> she knew you know, she didn't yeah, want her like, husband. He, he wasn't accustomed to keeping these hours that he right. was. And the brandy, I mean, Churchill would consume gallons of brandy. Yeah. You just stand for two quarts a day or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's just incredible. But Churchill liked his cocktails, but nothing to the order of a church. Uh, I mean, Roosevelt liked his cocktails, not the order. There, there was a great line. Trump. Somebody asked Anthony Eden, who was one of one of the key members, and he, and he succeeded Churchill as prime minister right. in the fifties. And when they talked to Eden, they said, uh, "You know, it must be fascinating. You 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 stay up all hours of the night discussing the great events with with Sir Winston." <laughs> and Eden says, "You must understand, we don't discuss anything. Winston talks, and we <laughs> listen." <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he out of power right after World War II? And then, and then he got yeah, reelected. Cle- Clement Attlee. Uh, he was yeah. voted out yeah. right after the, the victory over Germany. He was who, out before Jap- before him, Clement, Clement, Clement Attlee, Attlee. Yeah, was was leader, of the lab- yeah. leader of the Labor leader of the Labor Party. This little guy and Churchill said in, in the House of Commons, he said, "An empty car pulled up to Number Ten Downing Street today. Clem Attlee got out." <laughs> <laughs> But he, but, but he, uh, Churchill he, came back to power in the right. Five years, yeah, 1950, he would, 50, 51, he became right, prime minister again, right, yeah. and served until 55. By which point, his age was showing, mm-hmm. and and right. they, actually, they, some of the other Tory leaders went to the Queen and said, you know, Winston simply can't do this job anymore. But and this he, was the new Queen Elizabeth, and she's yeah, yeah. she's in her 20s. I, you yeah. know, this is 19. Yeah. She's, she's, uh, yeah, she, 1955, she's like 30, right. and here's this legend, this is the great, and they've been, been voted the greatest Englishman of all time, right. and they, what do you they want said, me to do? <laughs> they didn't, they couldn't, none of them could tell Sir Winston, that's kind, but they felt from the Queen he would accept it, so they claim it was the Queen who kind of gently told him that the time had really come when well, you must, you I know. I think his daughter had a lot to do with it, because they had a, a PBS special. Hmm. And his, her daughter Or was, Churchill's wife might have been gone. Yeah, he, he was know, going from when he was from North Africa, I mean, oh, way, yeah. Yeah. way back there. And uh, yeah. he came to the United States and... Uh, Charlie Chaplin. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He came in. He came to America. He was. He was injured. He was almost killed in New York City. He was in an automobile. He was. He was hit by a car in New York City in like right. 1930 or 31. That's right. He could have been killed. They often say you right. talk about the twists of history. He could have been killed and never would have been around to right. lead Britain during the war. Right. He was crossing a street in Manhattan and a car hit him. He was, he was very seriously injured. He was laid, laid right. up for yep. a long, a long right. time. Imagine but, all the conspiracy theories. Oh God! But mm-hmm. this. You know, this Special went on from the beginning, basically until the end when he died, and they put him on a barge and went down. Oh, the I, rem- I remember watching his funeral as a kid. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was broad. It was broadcast live. Telstar had kind of just come in. It was right. in 1965. Right. It was one of the first things, first big events that they right. could telecast yeah. live from Europe. Well, I remember all those all those cranes being on, on, on the River Thames. Lowering. Yeah, in his honor. Yeah, they right. were. Not, they and had, and they had, uh, like where presenting did they arms. Him anyway, pardon St. Paul's. St. I, I, th- I think it was at St. Paul's Cathedral. Yeah, it wasn't at West. I think it was at St. Paul's Cathedral. The Queen, because he's the one that said he got to take care of this, no matter what happens, that can't fall. It was the first time in history that a British monarch attended the funeral 
of of anyone other than an immediate member of the royal family. It was the well, first time a monarch attended the funeral of a subject, but they felt mm-hmm. he was so great that he was entitled to that. You ever honor. been to London to St. Paul's? No, no, no. About a block away, they've got a square block from the Blitz. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they just, left it. And they just, yeah, they left it. Oh. The only thing they do is spray. The rubble, I mean, still the rubble. and Yeah, it's still rubble. They, all they did was spray it because of... No. And that's know, stuff where, growing in there. Yeah, yeah. That's where the uh, the uh, tobacco company got the slogan, Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette. <laughs> like a like. And I think it was Time Magazine pronounced Winston Churchill the greatest political leader of the 20th century. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's I'll amazing. buy that. That's they, they did a survey. He was voted the greatest Englishman of all time. Isn't Englishman. it amazing how maybe it's the grace of God or something, but when things are going wrong, people come up. Kind of and and bear, change it. Bear this in mind that when he became prime minister for the first time, he was sixty-five years old. Mm-hmm. Right. He was washed up, and I mean, he was considered right. a yep. spent. He was finished. His career was over yeah. in the nineteen thirties. He was he, this old relic from the past, mm-hmm. talking about empire. And I mean, he was considered right. to be, you know, just he was finished. Okay. They had does anyone a, remember Winston Churchill, the Valiant Years? Oh yes. Bum 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 bum. Yeah, it goes sure back pretty far. I yeah. know why they yeah. don't repeat yeah. that. Richard they Burton. Should. Richard Burton did the words of yeah. Winston Churchill. Oh, I loved it. They but should repeat before that. Before that, wasn't he like the treasurer of the company or something like that? Well, he held. He he was he was head of the navy. He was first lord of the treasury. Yeah, was, that's they didn't call he, it I the mean, treasury, but they had first lord. He was he was he was the not the first lord of treasury. Maybe? He was chancellor of the exchequer. Yeah, first lord right. is the prime minister. He was chancellor of the exchequer, right. and he was first lord of the treasury when he became prime minister. His, and he held all kinds of... He was Home Secretary, which is like yeah. the Minister of the Interior in other countries. His bunker was under the, the Treasury Building. It still is. And on that happy note, yep. we have to end it because we've come to the end. I want to thank everyone who's here today. We had a couple of special guest stars and our regular crew, Bill Kugelman, John Koshelko, our announcer, Rich Lang, our announcer and our contact with Academia. Hmm. And Jeez. I keep forgetting your name, sir. My name? Yeah, you. I uh, don't <laughs> remember. Uh, Don. Peter. Don Peter, that's right. You, you know, yeah, Don Peter, I'll remember it next I time, I chance. promise. Yeah, I remember that's that what you said him. the last time. So anyway, this is Jack Ryan saying, remember that history is much more than a book that you keep on your shelf. And have a blessed Memorial Day. Yes. We wish to thank heaven of Jack FM, WRHS 89.7 FM, for broadcasting our shows over the Ridgewood <coughs> Pardon me. Take two. <laughs> we wish to thank heaven of Jack FM, WRHS 89.7 FM, for broadcasting our shows over the Ridgewood Radio Network. Recordings of previous Meet the Chicago Historians programs are available for your listening pleasure via the Internet at www.windycityhometown.com. We want to make a special thank you to the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, John Seconda. On behalf of everyone associated with our Historians program, we thank you for listening. This is your announcer, Rich Lang. So long until next time. You have been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, May the 15th, the year 2017. This broadcast was directed, was produced, this broadcast was produced by Jack Ryan, directed by John DeVita, and our special thanks once again to the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, Mr. John Chaconda. Today's broadcast was pre-recorded on Monday, May the 15th, the year 2017. Until next time, please be safe. Thanks for listening and happy Memorial Day. Be safe.